Hi, I'm Gail Smith. I want to welcome you to our store and our classroom. In this video, you will not be seeing live hedgehogs. We have lots of other cute videos for that. I want to be able to focus on the important information that will help us better connect you with your hedgehog. In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about my background and my experience in raising hedgehogs. After that, we're going to take a tour around our shop and explain why I sell what we sell and why we recommend what we recommend in each of the following areas. Cages and cage setup, heat and keeping your hedgehog warm, food and nutrition, toys and having fun with your hedgehog, bonding products and connecting with your hedgehog, bathing and dry skin, and finally health. We hope there, this video is helpful for several types of people. First and foremost, this video is for our customers. This is the information that I want you to know before you take one of my babies home. If you watch the video in its entirety, we'll give you a free gift to thank you for caring about your hedgehog as much as we do. We hope that this video is helpful to current hedgehog owners as well. We hope that you learned something, but we also know that we have a lot to learn too. We know that your experience can help others. So please consider leaving a comment and sharing something that you think other hedgehog owners should know. Please keep it positive and encouraging to everyone. In this section, I wanna talk a little bit about myself and giving you some background and history and my experience with hedgehogs. Animals have been in my life as far back as I can remember. I can remember my earliest animal husbandry lessons on my grandparents' farms. Both sets of grandparents were farmers and I spent a lot of time with my dad and my grandparents asking lots of questions about how animals are raised, why they did what they did. And so I gained a lot of experience raising animals for meat, show, and for pets based on just my experience around the farm. In 1984, I started raising rabbits in 4-H. There I gained a great foundation of animal husbandry and I got to practice the pros and cons of different breeding styles and habits and I learned a lot of animal husbandry principles that I use in the hedgehogs today. I continued raising rabbits through 1997 when I married and moved to Northwest Ohio just after completing my degree in biology. It was a huge transition to Northwest Ohio and my two hedgehogs, Pitter and Patter, became my saving grace. I learned a lot about handling hedgehogs from Pitter and Patter and about caring for them because the only information I was given was to keep them in a 10 gallon aquarium, feed them cat food, and use gloves when you handle them. So I took it upon myself to learn as much as I can about hedgehogs and ways to keep them healthy and happy. My goal in this video is simply to share my experience over the last 25 years in raising hedgehogs. I know there are a lot of different ways to care for hedgehogs, to feed hedgehogs, and to handle hedgehogs. And so if something in this video doesn't work for you, that's okay. There are other ways to do things. I encourage you to comment um, some positive experiences that you've had on this video. Connect with us in some way and to um, touch base with us because we're always learning. When you shop with us, either at our online store or in person when you pick up our hedgehog, or if you order some of our specific products on our Amazon store, your support really does help us help more people and it does make a positive impact in my life, which I really appreciate. Finally, before we begin, there are some ways that you can help us help other people. The first thing you can do is hit like and subscribe. That way you get our latest videos, which are gonna be generated from the comments and feedback we get from this video. The next thing you can do is share our video with groups and on your page. That helps us reach more people and help educate the more, um, and the more people we educate about hedgehogs, the better hedgehogs' lives are gonna be as pets. Different hedgehog owners have a lot of different experiences and how they like to keep their hedgehogs. So when you're considering what type of cage or what type of enclosure to use your hedgehog, there are several different factors that I'd like to talk about to make sure that you get off to the best start possible with your hedgehog. The first is, is your hedgehog's cage gonna be safe? When I talk about safe, I think about um, different levels, number one. Um, we wanna suggest not having levels because hedgehogs can climb and fall. The next is, does your hedgehog's cage have a lid? Um, hedgehogs are escape artists and even our best laid intentions can 
um, come to ruin because hedgehogs can climb. So if there's any chance that your hedgehog can climb, you wanna make sure that your, head, that your cage has a lid. That also, it keeps your hedgehog safe from other pets in the house as well. If there's, it prevents, you know, unfortunate accidents. So um, another thing that you want to consider is your hedgehog needs to be, your hedgehog's cage needs to be made safe from climbing. And so cages like this, um, the hedgehogs can use the sides of the cage like a ladder. So the hedgehog's gonna climb and fall, climb and fall. And you don't want the hedgehog, if it's a baby, to get its head stuck, um, which would be a hazard, but two, to have their legs twist and fall. So any cage with rungs, ladder rungs that they can climb, needs to be protected. This is my favorite way to protect cage, a cage. It is simply clear vinyl tablecloth material. Joanne Fabrics has a tablecloth section in the back of the um, store and they have several different grades of vinyl. I suggest getting um, the heavier tablecloth vinyl and always at Joann's get a coupon online. So really um, for this cage that we have, um, our, our standard cage, a half a yard of vinyl will do it. So cut that half a yard into two nine inch strips and then start at one side of the cage and line the inside of the cage all the way around. I find it's much easier to do it upside down. So I turn the cage upside down. I clamp the corner clamps so that they stay in place, turn the cage upside down, and then I just use clear packing tape to go all the way around. In a pinch, you can use cardboard and duct tape. So if you don't aren't prepared when you get home um, with the vinyl or a tablecloth or, or something, all that you're looking for is something smooth that your hedgehog is gonna, that's smooth, it's gonna cover up the liner. I like to use clear because your hedgehog um, no, will notice a difference if you take down cardboard, but it may not notice a difference down the road if you take down the clear vinyl. So plus, I think it looks a, not, a lot nicer. Don't forget to put the vinyl over your cage door as well. So just to recap, you wanna make sure that the cage that you're planning on using is safe in all different aspects. So for this safety feature, the cage that we use is our number one as far as safety goes. The next thing you wanna look for in your cage is a cage that's easy to heat. Um, so if your cage is very, very large, um, that's gonna be more difficult to heat unless you have a plan. So of all the cages um, that I have seen looked at, um, the open air wire cage is the easiest to heat. People using totes or tubs, you want to be very, or aquariums, even large 55 gallon or larger aquariums, you want to be very, very careful not to overheat. So can you use those, um, those, um, those options? Yes, but I don't have enough experience helping customers and I have not seen a consistent, really good way of doing things um, that I would think is 100% safe. Um, so for those reasons, I don't recommend tubs or aquariums um, unless you have a very specific plan that you're going to follow. Um, so my number one recommendation for ability to add heat is the wire cage. Of these two cages, this is the only category that I like um, this cage better. And the reason being is if I were to have this cage, I would hang the, um, I would hang the heat from the top of the inside of the cage. So um, the re I love the top opening of this cage. Um, that's my favorite aspect of this cage as a whole. Um, other Comparing the two, um, they both have a plastic tub, they both have wire, they both have a front opening, and they both have a top opening. The top opening is still very, very good on this cage, just a little different. If I had a, um, so for adding heat, I do like this one better if you want to hang it on the inside. If you want to have the heat on top, this one, of course, with a flat top is much better. The next thing you want to think about when you are choosing a cage is easy access. We kind of already touched on this with our last topic, but I love the fact that the top of this lifts up all the way. And I love the top, the fact that this one has easy access here. There are a couple versions of cages that I have seen 
that only have a front door access. The challenge with only a front door access is getting what you need in and out of the cage easily. Look how hard that is to reach in like this versus reaching in right over the top. So easy access, the KT Super Pet Cages, they only have one front door. So for that reason, I do not sell those, those cages because the one front door seems very awkward and people and picking your hedgehog up out of the cage is one of the hardest parts of getting a bonding with your hedgehog and handling. So if you have an easier way to do it, that's fine. If you notice um, on the height of the cages, this one is sitting on an aquarium stand. This one is on a table. I think it's much, much easier personally to have it a little bit lower because I like to go from the top. But certainly if you feel comfortable going in through the door um, and just picking up the sleeping bag, you can certainly use, you have it on a table. Milk crates also work great to put your cage on, especially for kids. It gets, gives them even a lower access and then you, or either milk crates or wooden crates. That way you have storage underneath, but your hedgehog is at a good height to get them in and out of. You never wanna have the cage on the floor. The reason you don't wanna have it on the floor is because drafts. It is much, much cooler on the floor and you'll have much better heat up off the ground because keeping your hedgehog warm is super important. So again, as far as easy access, I like both of these cages. The next topic is, is your cage gonna be easy to clean? I have seen a lot of homemade cages um, and cages that do not have a pan like this, you have to be very, very careful of. What type of bedding are you gonna use and how easy is that bedding to clean? Super important. So as far as easy to clean, these are my two, this is again, my favorite type of cage because um, you can use the fleece option or the shaving option. So many of our customers use um, the fleece option that that's what I would suggest starting out with if you can. Um, there are, I'm sure, people that do not like the, the use of fleece. There are pros and cons of every bedding, but um, as far as most of our customers, most of our customers are very happy to start out using fleece and most of our customers like using fleece. So easy to clean and or can I use fleece with this cage? Um, this cage I like better because it has one clip on each end. This cage is actually fairly hard or fairly sturdy and heavy material. So if you have a little bit of weight, a couple things of litter on the top or maybe even nothing, your hedgehog is not gonna be able to lift the bottom of this cage. So to clean this cage, I literally unsnap the end, lift the top off, set it down, and I have easy access. This cage has eight clips total. And so there is a lot more clipping around the edge. Other cages have things in them that, um, that make it very, very difficult to take the top on and off. So how easy it is to get on and off. Something else, as we're talking about keep, keeping the head, the um, taking the top on and off, this ca cage came with kind of like a shelf. I always get rid of those for a couple reasons we've already talked about. One is that your hedgehog climbing, climbing and falling, climbing and falling. Um, they do not go down ladders. They walk off the edge. So um, I, I just would avoid those, those shelves for the, for the safety factor. Other than the safety factor, what is probably even a bigger factor because on a danger level, it's fairly a low, a low danger at this high um, of falling off, but I still wouldn't want to do it to put it in any danger. But another really important thing is when you have those hides in here, look how difficult it is and it would be for me to get the hedgehog out of that hide. Um, or even coming in from the top, it's very difficult to get the hedgehog out of the cage using those those accessories inside. So when, um, when you're thinking about cages, talking about accessories and things, um, I also avoid cages that come with kit, like the, usually the ones that come with the hides have a water bottle and food dish. Unfortunately, the water bottles are rare that they're okay to use. They're either too big or they have the wrong type of ball bearing in them. So I am again, 
I think it's a waste to buy um, the cages that have other stuff in them as well. <clears throat> If you, if you do have one or inherit one and you certainly had this cage for a bunny or a guinea pig and you already have it, I would definitely um, use it. Um, so that brings us to cost. Um, cost is a huge part of why, why I sell what I sell um, because if people can't afford it on a regular basis um, and if it's not something that I my, myself would wanna purchase, I, I really don't wanna sell it. So as a cost value, we think our cages are the best value that you can find for the best quality that you can find. So to recap, when you're trying to decide what cage to use, remember there are lots of different ways to keep your hedgehog healthy. Um, but when you're thinking about cages, remember it must be safe. It must be an adequate size. We didn't hit on that yet. Um, and adequate size would be something like this. When we talk about what to put in the cage, you will need to, you will help see what is an, an adequate size. So um, with after adequate size, you wanna make sure that the, ca the cage is easy to heat, it's easy to access, it's easy to clean, and overall is it cost effective. So hopefully that information will help you decide what kind of cage that you're gonna use. The first thing I wanna talk about in, in your cage, and everything we're gonna talk about in this section is what goes in your cage, is giving your hedgehog water. Our hedgehogs are used to this particular brand and size of water bottle. I suggest using this size because the large rabbit or guinea pig ones have too much water in it, and, too, um, and the ball is also a lot larger for, the, for your hedgehog. So you, don't, you want to always use fresh water. So this bottle really is the best size of water bottle for your hedgehog. The hedgehog water bottle goes inside the cage. And almost every cage that I know, if you would put the water bottle on the outside, it would be too high for your hedgehog to, to reach. So um, this particular water bottle and hanger that comes in our cage package hangs on the inside. Um, and you just find the height so that the water bottle is at the hedgehog shoulder level. In your water bottle, I do suggest using a bottled or filtered water. Your water is going to taste different than our water and your water um, may have um, high chlorine or things in it that your hedgehog might not do well on. So unless you have um, well water, you can adjust your hedgehog to well water. Most well water is, is actually very good. But um, if you have the opportunity, I strongly suggest bottled or filtered water. Another option. Um, when you look at your water bottle, how do you know it's safe? There are horror stories of hedgehogs getting their tongue caught. This water bottle has a safety feature and that safety feature is that the ball falls down into the tip. So your hedgehog will not get its, its tongue cut. So um, we have been using the, for these water bottles for literally thousands of animals of all different species and I've never had a problem with this type of tip, or this particular one. Some people, however, um, are bigger fans of water dishes. Some people are very adamant that you should never use a, uh, a dish because of the bacterial buildup. Other people are very adamant that you shouldn't use a bottle, that a dish is better. So you have to decide what's best for you. But if you were to use a dish, this is a very popular dish um, and a fountain that we like um, that you can put water in. It has a filter, it's very stable, keeps the hedgehog from tipping it over. So as far as water goes, those are very two things. In our food section, we talked about um, dishes. Our cage package does come with a dish. You get to decide if you like the small or large. Um, either one is fine, depending on what you want to use it. The next thing that comes in our cage package is a place to hide, and actually two places to hide comes in our cage package. And the reason why I suggest having two is because hedgehogs are all different. Um, and they're gonna like different things. And you're gonna find that it's easier to get your hedgehog out of two different things. And so um, you have to figure out what works best for you. So to go over the hides that we have, one of the, um, the most basic thing and what some, almost everybody gets is a sleeping bag. The reason why I love the sleeping bags is you can just literally pick up the sleeping bag. It's in here, you can take it with you wherever you need to. And then most importantly, it's hopefully easy for you to get your hedgehog out of the sleeping bag. Um, we have a lot of different types of sleeping bags. Um, if there's enough requests, I can do a video on 
the types of sweeping bags and we can put a link in the bottom um, for different types but for right now um, this cage package has a large um, sleeping bag in it um, and that is what is in this cage package the second thing or another option that you have is a standard igloo when you do the igloos um, something that I love to do with them is to use this crinkle fluffy bedding called eco bedding you shove it in the igloo the hedgehog has a place to hide and dig but also when you go to pick the hedgehog up out of the cage then you pick up the bedding with your hedgehog. So since it's gonna be on the bottom of the cage, for example, your hedgehog would be here. You would lift up the igloo, there would be a ball of bedding, fluffy bedding, and you could pick the hedgehog up with the bedding to help cushion your hands. So um, some people also like to put the sleeping bag inside the igloo. That will also help keep it warm if temperature is an issue for you because the igloo will help hold the heat. Another option to go in your cage package are one of these awesome um, lap mat tunnels. Hedgehog is in here. You pick this up out of the cage and the awesome thing about this is there's three snaps. You unsnap it and now your hedgehog's out. And so you've been able to pick it up out of the cage and have it out um, on your lap without having to fool with it. So that is another option. Our next option is our, our hideaway beds, our tunnel beds. I love these houses because this bed fits in here. To get your hedgehog out, you simply pull the bed out. So we have beds that can go in sleeping bags. Um, so you can buy the beds individually you can um but i like the beds because then you slide the bed out rather than the hedgehog having to get it out from inside we have regular tunnels and again there are lots of other products on our website different types of things we appreciate your support um thank you hopefully you find that this information is helpful so supporting our store um helps us to do more things for you um this is an example of something that I would use once you are bonded to your hedgehog. If you can tell me that it's easy for you to get your hedgehog out of the cage, then you can use something like this. Um, the reason why I say it's easy for you to get your hedgehog out is that um, your hedgehog is going to want to go in here and they're going to want to burrow. They can go in the end, there's an opening, but to get your hedgehog out of this tunnel, would be a little bit more difficult if your hedgehog was balled up than would the other options that we have. So once you get confident picking your hedgehog up out of the cage, this is a great tunnel, a great hide. So um, we see a lot of cute things on Amazon and we have some in our store that are cute hides, but you wanna make sure that it's easy to get your hedgehog out of the cage out of the sleeping thing before you use the ones that have a solid end on them or something that's a little bit harder. The next thing to come in our, our cage package is a wheel. This, the Super Pet or KT Comfort wheel is like this. This is the, the one and the main hedgehog wheel that we see in pet stores. It's the easiest for us to get. It's the most cost effective and um, it's very easy to clean. So does it have five stars? I would say no. I would say it has a solid four stars um, and that's why we put it in our cage package. So one thing to think about if you're inheriting products or buying um, them through our Amazon store or something like that, you wanna make sure that it is a 12 inch wheel. The one that is smaller than nine inch is gonna be too small. That's important for your hedgehog because hedgehogs are different than rodents. Rodents have a straight spine. Hedgehogs have a curved spine. So if your wheel is too small, it makes your hedgehog run at an awkward angle. The awkward angle can give your hedgehog health problems down the road. So my favorite wheel um, that we currently don't have in our store, but hopefully we do some someday. And if somebody wants to make these for us, um, that would be great because we would love to sell them. But that is a bucket wheel, a Carolina storm wheel. One of the homemade wheels, that has a bucket on the end. Those tend to be more quiet um, and they are easier to clean. So 
Carolina Storm, a bucket wheel, something like that would be my top choice. But as far as price goes and as far as um, easy, to, easy to find, easy to locate, the comfort wheel is what comes in our cage package right now. The next thing that you want to have in your, um, in your cage is bedding. And so as we talked about earlier, there are a lot of different options and different people use different options. The most common option is using fleece as a liner. And as you can see, we, we, um, we have a whole lot of different fleece options here. And it's just simply a yard of fabric. And um, for this cage, all of our fleece is cut depending on our cage size. So you can measure it um, and see, we do have some fun hedgehog prints in our fleece collection. Um, we tend to stock up on hedgehog print fleece if we are able to. So um, we just think those prints are fun. Um, so we have some hedgehog fleece prints in our store, but not everyone wants to use fleece. Um, there are another option is using the care fresh or the fluffy paper bedding. And then finally, um, you can use pine shavings or an aspen. Again, a lot of people that are against some of those options on both camps, and we understand that. I would love to do a Zoom chat to um, talk more about those topics. If you're interested, message us through our website, um, and we will um, set that up because I, there's a lot of different things that work. And so I would love to add, um, add more to this video on it. But for now, um, the common ones are fabric, um, fluffy paper, or... Um, a shavings or pine material of some of some sort. We use a triple filtered pine that we absolutely love. We'll put a um, picture of it in this video so you can see what it is. But we love this type of bedding. But if I had a if I had a single pet hedgehog, and when we do demonstration hedgehogs and things, I definitely prefer the fleece as far as mess goes and easy to clean over anything else because I do have to sweep quite a bit in our house because the shavings do get everywhere. So those are the main bedding options. So if you're using fleece, you will also need a litter pan in your cage. We have two different sizes of litter pans and hands down, the large litter pan is the most popular and it's pop popular because the wheel will fit in the litter pan. So we suggest leaving your wheel out for the first week so that your hedgehog can get used to um, going potty where it should. Um, if it misses, take the droppings, put it in the litter pan, put the hedgehog in the pan. Keep putting the droppings in that litter pan. So if you have the wheel in too soon, the hedgehog will focus on potty, will focus on running and not potty. Um, some hedgehogs never ever use the, the litter pan, um, but I would say at least 50% do and 50% pe people have success. If you have success, you might comment and, and say what um, has worked for you and how you got your hedgehog to do that. That would be great. Or I'd love to do a Zoom session on that. But um, most of our customers, I would say it's about 50%. So I suggest having the large litter pan with the wheel in it. Um, that is the most popular. As far as bedding, um, you do not want to use a pelleted paper. Pelleted paper expands when it gets wet. And so if your hedgehog should eat a pelleted paper, we have seen hedgehog deaths because of that, because they eat something that's new, they eat that pelleted paper, the paper expand and they get a blockage. So do not use a pelleted paper. You do not want to use a clumping kitty litter because a clumping kitty, kitty litter can stick to your hedgehog. So avoid clumping kitty litter, avoid things with strong scents, things like that. So that the most popular um, beddings are number one, we like the KT potty litter. The reason we like it, it is very small, tiny pieces of bentonite clay. If the hedgehog should eat it, um, it's certainly not something we want to encourage, but if your hedgehog does eat it, that bentonite clay will just pass right through. Sometimes bentonite is used homeopathically for different digestive issues. So um, we have had lots of good luck with this bentonite clay. There it does not have the dust. Um, the downside is it only comes in this small box. So it's $3 a box. A lot of our customers stock up on several boxes. 
um, so they can decide how long it's going to last and if they want to use it in the long run. Um, but what we have found is that it's about one box a week um, or less. So, um, and that's with spot cleaning on a regular basis. We have little litter, litter scoops. Um, that's probably the number one thing people said they wish they had gotten that they didn't get when they were here is a litter scoop. And so um, having that litter scoop and scooping out the droppings on a regular basis is good. But when you're litter training your hedgehog, you do want it to get quite dirty at the beginning so that it learns that's the proper place to party. So as a recap, we have um, eco bedding that makes a big fluffy mess, which is great for a dig box or underneath your plastic igloo. We have different types of pie. Um, oh, and I just realized I forgot to talk about this. So this is a pelleted pine kitty litter and pelleted pine um, comes in kitty litter and it also comes in horse bedding. So this is actually the horse bedding type um, the pros of this bedding is you can get a 40 pound bag and it'll last forever. Um, the, the negatives are sometimes um, people have better luck with the clay um, and this does break down into a dust. So, um, but there is enough success with this. We do like this litter. Um, some people even use this as their cage bedding instead of um, using fleece. They use this in the entire bottom of the cage. So um, this is the bedding I do give two thumbs up to, but um, I do put the clay and the fleece ob above it. Heat is one of the most important topics we can talk about in regards to hedgehogs. False hibernation is one of the most common accidental pet deaths that we see in um, and hedgehogs. So for that reason, I take heat very seriously. We keep our hedgehog room between 75 and 85 and almost, and honestly, it's usually between 80 and 85. In the summer, if it gets too, if it gets hot, um, we very rarely run the air conditioner. If we can see into be in the room and um, the hedgehogs are splat out looking comfortable, we let them do. But if it does get in the high 90s, we do turn on the air conditioner. So that being said, hedgehogs do love heat and they need consistent heat, meaning 24 7, 24 7 heat. So they're not like a reptile where they have um, only certain hours of heat and then certain hours of cool down time. So when we talk about heat um, and since heat is left on, I take it very seriously as far as safety goes. So of all the brands out there, there are two brands that I use and that I recommend. I know there's a lot of other ones on Amazon and things, um, discounts, knockoffs, and things like that. But when we're talking about heat, it, is, it isn't something that I try to go cheap on. I try to go with consistent, um, proven results. That being said, my two favorite companies are Zoomed and Flukers. Zoomed is used, in my experience, um, in the reptile world, because these are reptile products. Zoomed, is the is the Cadillac of the the um, heating product companies, and so for that reason they are also my favorite. So when we're looking at heat and adding heat, we want to make sure that we're only adding heat, no light. So that in order to do that, you want to use a ceramic heat emitter, and an emitter looks the same when it's off and is when it's on. So there is no light. Because of that, um, it is going to produce a hotter heat than a traditional bulb. For example, if you have a heat light, the energy is divided between light and heat. When you have a heat emitter, all of the energy is directed for heat. So when you um, have a higher amount of heat, you must have a socket or a base that is regulated and capable of handling that extra heat. So if you would have um, a heat light in the barn for your chicks, that base is probably not recommended for ceramic heat and it could be a severe fire hazard. So when you're dealing with heat, always follow the manufacturer's instructions. Of Zoomed, Zoomed has um, one type of base that they recommend for their products. A heat emitter is a funny shaped bulb and it's usually in a square box like this. It's the only size that it comes in. Um, but the base is a cage type base. So Zoomed recommends, it, recommends the cage base with their heat bulbs, whatever watt that that is, um, 60, 100, or 150. We typically sell two bulbs. We sell the 150 the most. That is if somebody tells me that their, their house 
is in the 70 to 74 range. Most of our customers use 150 watt. If you think your room is in the 74, 75 range, you might be able to get away with a 60 watt heat emitter. That'll bump it up to just a warmer, more comfortable te temperature for your hedgehogs. So with ZoomEd, we use either a 60 or 150 watt um, bulb. You can use 100, we just don't sell them, um, in this type of base. Flukers uses a dome type base for their heat emitters and um, com very comparable um, companies. Um, this base tends to sit flat on a cage, so it sits on the top. Um, as far as safety goes, what I like to do is I like to punch a hole in either side of the base so that I can use a wire tie and secure it to the top of the cage. If either one of these, um, I always start out on top of the cage with either one of the bases. That way you can get a reading of what it's like underneath. Both of these bases can attach inside the cage, so you would hang it from the top of the cage. Again, safety first, so use lots of zip ties to secure this base above the hedgehog. Say for example, if your house is 68 and you find that your, your temperature where your hedgehog is sleeping, that's where you're gonna wanna monitor the temperature of the mouse, if your temperature is still in the 70s, you may get more heat down here by hanging the, ba the base inside of the cage. And we have some pictures that we can show you what that looks like. So for setting up your cage, you can either start out with the heat on top, or if it's not enough, hang it on the inside, using safety first to make sure everything is very secure. Um, Pros and cons of the two types of vases. Um, this is more directional heat, so it will direct it downward. If you're worried about um, how much heat you need, this is much more directional. But in my personal opinion, the lamp, um, the cage um, type fixture is safer around kids. And if you should sit it on the floor, um, it's not gonna burn anything versus if you would happen to hit to um, something common that people do is they take it off to get the hedgehog out of the cage and they sit it down on the floor or something like that when you're cleaning and you forget that it's on because you don't see a light. So um, for that reason, um, for younger people or if you're worried about bumping, you might consider the cage style lamp. Next, um, we wanna talk about monitoring that temperature. and. Um, if you have a large cage, we understand that um, the whole cage is not going to be able to be 75 to 85, but you definitely want to make sure the sleeping area is your warmest area. You can leave the, um, the food and water on the cool end with the wheel and litter pan, but then that sleeping area is where you're going to want to monitor. There's a couple ways that you can do that. Um, our preferred method is to use a digital thermometer and um, we have two different types typically. The one is just your standard household thermometer. Um, and then this one happens to be one that alerts your phone um, so that you are, can be notified if the temperature is out of your set range. So um, when you're looking for a thermometer, my favorite characteristics is that it keeps track of um, the high and the low so that you know what temperature your room is fluctuating or your hedgehog's cage is fluctuating. Because when people um, message me with a problem, one of the very first things I say is, what is the temperature of your cage? And when people don't know, chances are that's when there can be a problem. So you wanna monitor the highs and lows of your hedgehog's sleeping area. This type of um, thermometer, you can add some Velcro, Velcro it right to the side of the cage. If your hedgehog has a hard shell igloo, you can sit it right on top of the igloo. The hedgehogs aren't gonna hurt your thermometer. The worst thing that's gonna happen is they could poop on it if it's laying in the bottom. But um, it's really important to know the temperature range that your hedgehog is going in. That being said, um, some people do ask about thermostats or rheostats and what is the difference and do you need them? So um, thermostats and rheostats can be very, very helpful and I'll explain the difference. Um, but are they necessary? Um, I would suggest that is something that um, you have to decide later on. Majority of our customers do not use them. They adjust um, the temperature manually by raising or lowering the height of the, um, 
of the fixture or by um, decreasing the bulb size or, or that sort of thing. But if you do want to use a temperature regulator, there are two kinds. A rheostat has a dial on it and what that does is allows you to turn the temperature down manually. Essentially, you're adding a dimmer to the um, a dimmer to your fixture so that you can manually turn it down. So you can turn a 150 watt bulb down to a lower wattage. So it can save you money that way. But again, it's a manual turning it down. The, the thermostat, what a thermostat does is a thermostat turns the emitter on or off whether or not um, heat is needed. So um, I have heard mixed reviews about that. Um, the companies both say that a thermostat can be used on their products. Um, however, um, there has been some concern that um, it can damage the bulb with the temperature going off and on, off and on, off and on, that those types of bulbs really aren't designed for that. So I have heard mixed reviews on that, but if you want a thermostat that's gonna turn it off and on automatically, um, we do recommend the ZoomEd ones. So again, stick with what your company recommends. If you're using ZoomEd, go with ZoomEd. If you're using Flukers, go with Flukers and follow manufacturer's instructions. Last but not least, I'm gonna talk about heating pads. Um, ceramic heat emitters are the most common ways to keep your hedgehog warm. And that is what 99% um, of our customers use. But we do he have people say, well, what about heat rocks? What about heating pads? Heat rocks, absolutely not. Um, that I have seen multiple um, injuries from hedgehogs regarding that sort of thing. Um, and secondly, um, with heating pads, you need to be very, very careful. Again, I have seen burns from, therm from um, heating pads malfunctioning, and um, I have personally seen the burns on customers' hedgehogs. So um, I do not recommend your average heating pad um, as a way to add heat to your cage. Um, in addition, um, there are reptile, some people have used reptile heat mats or um, there's two different kinds of those. I know some people do use them and recommend them. You have to be very, very careful. Um, it's because you have to be so careful, it's not something that I typically use or recommend, but if you're a reptile person and you know how to do it, you know how to follow the safety features, um, by, by all means, that is fine. Finally, the one um, brand of small animal heating mat that I have heard positive things about is the K&H brand. It's a hard um, shell ceramic heat mat um, that you can use. Um, and it does, I do suggest having a cover for that. So that is the one brand of heating pad that I recommend is K&H. So that all being said, as we know, there's more than one way to skin a cat. So there's more than one way to keep your hedgehog warm. If you have some suggestions of ways that have worked for you, please comment or please set up a Zoom video with us because I am always learning and I would love to share what you um, can share with me. Diet is one of my favorite topics, but it's also one of my least favorite topics because this is what topic that I'm probably gonna get the most haters. So with that being said, I wanna acknowledge that there's more than one way to skin a cat, as my dad used to say. So there's more than one way to keep your hedgehog healthy. So what we're gonna focus on is my experience over the past 25 years and what I have found um, that has worked best for us. But I'm gonna break it down in a simple, um, as, in as, as simple way as I can. So let's think about human diets. If you are a pro athlete and you wanna take really good care of your body, you have a lot of different nutritional options. Um, there's your fast food. We know all we all know what fast food is and we all know what fast food does to your body So occasionally fast food is okay But you want to keep that in the occasional category if your career depends on your the health and well-being of your body, right? Then we have your good old home cooking. That's stuff that mom makes right um, and we all know what can happen on mom's good cooking we all know that there are different levels and pros and cons of our mom's home cooking or, or your home cooking for that matter. So home cooking can be good, but it could also have some problems. So those pro athletes are gonna be careful about their home cooking. But then there's also a nutritional, um, experienced nutritionist who works with athletes to give them the best 
diet possible. So your salads and all those healthy things that you would eat if you were going to take really good care of your body. So we, we can relate to um, human nutrition the same way with hedgehogs. So let me give you a comparison. There is fast food in the hedgehog in the hedgehog food market. And that is in generally what you would find in the pet store labeled as hedgehog food. You have to be very, very careful what you buy, just like fast food. Um, a cheeseburger from McDonald's is going to have a completely different nutritional value than a grass fed Angus burger that you make in your in your own kitchen at home. Same sandwich, so to speak, but completely different nutritional values and, and how you can eat that hamburger. So that being said, we recommend not buying the hedgehog fast food. Um, it's just not good. So the next best thing, if you do need to buy a, a food outside of the highest end of hedgehog food is cat food. And there are a lot of people that feed their hedgehog cat food. Some cat food does very well and some cat food is terrible. But when we're thinking about cat foods and we're thinking about foods, this is where it gets complicated. We need to think about the um, anatomy of a hedgehog and an anatomy of a cat, anatomy of other animals, because your anatomy makes a difference in how you process food. Relating back to humans again, um, let's take kale for example. A rabbit eating kale is gonna be able to digest that kale much differently than we humans can. But in order to make that kale more digestible, we can put that kale, either cook it, we can eat it raw, or we can put it in a smoothie. Of those options, your raw kale in a smoothie is gonna be um, very nutritious and a lot easier to digest than a kale salad. So how food is processed can make a difference on its nutritional value and how we eat that. That's really important, so remember that. So back to cat food. Cat foods are designed for cats. Um, cats have different nutritional needs than hedgehogs. Um, they have a different digestive tract than hedgehogs. Um, one thing about the hedgehog's digestive tract is they don't have a cecum. A cecum is where plant matter is digested. And so a hedgehog's digestive tract is much, much shorter than most other animals. That being said, there's less time for foods to be digested. So um, that's very important because how a food is processed affects its digestibility. Cat food is made for cats. All the research on cat foods um, done by cat food companies is done on cats. That being said, um, if you are buying from a breeder that uses a certain type of cat food and they've had good luck with it and their lines are doing thriving and healthy and they have a good track record with it, then you can use it. Um, we of course are telling you what we have found in our experience and what has worked best for us. So um, with that home cooking category, we put the cat foods in that category. Certainly better than fast foods, but within that home cooking category, there's a lot of good foods and then there are some that are just not good for your hedgehog. So we're gonna leave that up to other breeders to comment and say what they use. But if you are a breeder and you comment, please say how long you've been um, using your food and why you think it's better than others. So we ask breeders to do that or if you're using a diet, um, let us know. And so when, when we're, let's, take a break right there and talk about um, how do we know how a hedgehog food is working. So back to my years of raising rabbits and um, my dad and grandpa's years of showing animals, um, we learned that what you put into an animal impacts what you get out of an animal. Nutrition makes a huge difference just like it does in that pro athlete's body. So the ways that we gauge a food's effectiveness are several things. One, how well are they producing? Because if, an, if a diet can impact how well your animals produce. So number one, we want to make sure that they're producing well on that food. Um, and then we want to know um, how, are the, how is their health? How many health problems are we having? What are we seeing? What kind of trends are we seeing? So how healthy are the animals? And then um, what is the output of that animal? Are the poops real stinky? Because um, copious amounts of poop with a high smell is just not good to have around. So um, again, we look at the animal's performance. 
we look at a lot of animals data over a long period of time how well are the hedgehogs health wise so it's hard for me when people say hey how does this food work i can't honestly give an opinion because um, i have not tried that um, and when you're looking for advice from others you want to know what is their background what is their experience what are they basing their recommendations on so just because it's convenient does not always make it a good option in my opinion so um back to um the hedgehog's food and so we know fast food is not a good idea cat food has pros and cons one thing that breeders do um and that we do also support and we use it as part of our blend is the breeders will mix several different kinds of cat foods together that way if there is ever a problem in one food the idea is that by having a variety it balances out so variety is good in the diet we think that's an excellent idea as individual pet owners it's difficult for an individual pet owner to feed a variety of cat foods because you're going to end up with a lot of food so if you buy six different foods mix them together you're going to have six years worth of hedgehog food and that is not good we don't buy 12 years worth of cereal at a time you don't want to get um a lot of hedgehog food at a time and we'll talk about that too with our food so um, a variety of cat foods is good and there are breeders that sell their own mixes and so um, if you buy from one of those breeders consider supporting them because they have had good luck with that um, diet plan so now we're gonna move on to what we do in 1999 I started working with a company called pet pro products and I met them um, in person and was talking to Jim, the owner. And um, by that point in my career, I had tried all those other hedgehog foods that were out there and none of them um, made, the, made the cut. So um, when I tried Pet Pro's Spikes Delight at the time, um, I was very skeptical. But over time, I gave it a try. Our hedgehogs liked the taste of it. I liked the output. That's the first thing that we can measure is how much were they eating and how. And then finally, we started seeing a change in our production. So there are several things that make um, Spike's products different than other foods. Um, first and foremost is the quality of ingredients. I have visited um, Jim at Pet Pro Products in person and I have physically held each of the ingredients in my hands and we have personally gone over why every ingredient is in the food. So we know exactly what is in the food, what its purpose is. So it, they are intentional ingredients, every one of them. And um, there are other videos that explain those ingredients in more detail. But um, the most important thing that is different than all other foods is how the way spikes is processed. If you remember back to when we were talking about kale and how um, if we have kale in our smoothies, it's easier for us to digest because it's ground and it's basically pre-chewed. So it's pre-digestion essentially. So the way um, Pet Pro cooks their food is by grinding. So the dry ingredients come together and they pass through a tube about yay long. And in that tube, the, the food is ground at such high speeds that the heat is created and the, and the food is cooked. So what that means is the oats that are in the food, as they are ground at high speeds, they're basically chewed up really fast and it's chewed up so fast that it cooks it. Because we know that having cooked oats is easier to digest than raw oats um, in, in humans and the same way with hedgehogs. So as um the food is being created the only heat added is during the friction creating process that process only takes 30 seconds why is that important you might want to know um so the time that the food is exposed to heat affects the nutritional value so what it boils down to is the way spikes um products are processed makes them highly digestible so because the foods are highly digestible, they're getting more nutrition out of that. What that means is the hedgehogs eat less, they poop less, they smell less, and in the long run, it costs a lot less. So we love um, the Spikes Ultra Plus, and that is the food we've been using for several years. 
what makes Spikes Ultra Plus what it is, is we've been working with Jim, like I said, since the spring of 1999. And over the years, we have tweaked the food to be the best that we can make it possible. Um, it is called Plus because there are insects in the food, which is the next topic that we'll talk about. Hedgehogs have a unique need for something called chitin. And chitin is in the exoskeleton of bugs. What chitin does is chitin adheres to fat. And so in humans, if we would eat chitin, it's a weight loss product because chitin adheres to fat and then our body doesn't know what to do with it, so it flushes it out. Um, in hedgehogs, chitin adheres to fat, but hedgehogs have an enzyme that allows them to process that, to recognize that. So the benefit of having chitin in a hedgehog's food is that the fat is more easily digested. That's important because then they get more nutrition out of what they eat. The fat is utilized as a food rather than stored up for later. So um, the Spikes Ultra Plus has freeze-dried insects in it so that they are getting natural sources of chitin, which helps them process fat, which helps them utilize their food even better. So um, the foods that we use is called Spikes Ultra Plus. Um, the reason why you will not find it in many stores is Pet Pro Products has a unique marketing way. They um, love to work with breeders. And so they, they do custom make foods. So to ask your breeder questions, ask a lot of questions and find out information before you use a food because there are other brands of custom foods um, that have different results. So I'm not gonna speak about that. Um, at this point in time, I'd love to have a breeder conversation and record it about what works for you and why your food is different. Um, so um, feel free to message us through our website if you'd like to have one of those conversations. But um, we recommend the Spikes Ultra Plus. Um, as far as I know, it is not sold on Amazon or anything like that. You'll want to find a breeder that sells it or order it directly from the company. Um, and um, the reason being is Pet Pro Products does not have pesticides or preservatives in their food. That's another very good thing, but that does not create a long shelf life. So what that means is if um, Amazon, Chewy, all those things, uh, or Chewy and um, some of the other distributors, they have to have their, their food in the warehouse and you have no idea how long it's gonna sit there before it goes to the consumer. Pet Pro wants their foods consumed very quickly. So for example, this two and a half pound bag of food will last three months, about 110 days, if I remember correctly. So what we suggest is only buying one bag at a time because your food will spoil since it doesn't have nat the only um, pesticides and preservatives in it are natural and greases, ingredients, the oils in the food. So what we suggest is that fast, use it up fast and get it fresh. Um, as we know in our own human foods, um, fresh foods are much more nutritional and better tasting than foods that have sat on the shelf for a long time. So um, that being said, the second thing that we do, so this is our main diet. The second thing we use is a variety mix. This is that blend of cat foods that we talked about. And so we don't know what perfect is. We don't know if spikes is perfect. So what we do is I like to take the big bag of spikes, the small bag of the variety mix, mix them together, stir it up in a bowl, and then um, your hedgehog will get a tablespoon a day. That being said, your tablespoon might need to be adjusted. We suggest daily monitoring of your hedgehog's food. That means we do not suggest giving free feed. So we do not suggest filling your hedgehog's bowl of food. The reason why is it's extremely important to pay attention to how much your hedgehog is eating every day. Not eating is the number one sign that something could be going wrong with your hedgehog. So we suggest giving your hedgehog a monitored amount every day. Our hedgehogs eat approximately a tablespoon a day. That being said, it is approximate because different hedgehogs have different nutritional needs. The more active the hedgehog is, the more calories it's gonna need, therefore the more food that your hedgehog's gonna give. So our average hedgehog does eat a tablespoon a day. However, we've noticed, <clears throat> excuse me, that our adult males do eat less than a tablespoon. As, um, however, our babies 
can sometimes eat a little bit more than a tablespoon. And our nursing moms definitely eat a lot more than either the males or the growing hedgehogs. So what we suggest is monitoring your hedgehog's food. Give it a tablespoon a day, but if it eats it all, you might offer it a little bit more, like a heaping tablespoon, to see if it eats it all. In our experience, using our food combination, the Spikes Ultra Plus, with our cat food variety mix, mixed together, that our hedgehogs do not get fat. Um, we give, we like to see just a little bit of crumbs left in the dish um, the next day, but we definitely adjust that tablespoon, but um, a tablespoon is what we use. People ask, how do I know if my hedgehog is the right weight? How much should a hedgehog weigh? And hedgehogs um, are gonna have different bone structure and body types, just like people. So there is not a definite weight range that your hedgehog should fall into. However, there are a couple ways that you can know if your hedgehog is healthy or not. Um, I like to um, compare them to the Pils Pillsbury Doughboy. So if your hedgehog looks like the Pillsbury Doughboy, if it's got bulges and extra plumpness, it is probably too fat. However, if your hedgehog looks pinched or angles or narrows, so imagine squeezing that Pillsbury Doughboy or squeeze something and there looks like there's indentations, then your hedgehog is probably too thin. You want a nice, round, smooth body type. And we do have a video on this particular topic um, if you wanna learn more about it. So in summary, our hedgehogs get about a tablespoon of a blend of our Spikes Ultra Plus and our cat food mix. The next thing people want to know is and talk about is treats. What are um, nutritious treats? Going back to what a hedgehog's nutrition needs are, we use freeze-dried insects as our main treat for our hedgehogs. And um, there are hedgehogs that don't like freeze-dried bugs. Um, just like there are some kids that don't like um, pizza or macaroni and cheese. There are always the exceptions to the rule. So in general though, freeze dried insects are one of the most common um, treats to give a hedgehog. Keep in mind, they are freeze dried, which means they do not have moisture in them. So we do not want to give free feed the freeze dried insects as they can eat too much or they have, there have been um, internet reports of hedgehogs eating too many. So we do suggest just a few freeze dried insects a day. Um, how we make our hedgehog treats a little bit more desirable is we use a product called Stress Less. And Stress Less is um, great as a treat, so I can powder coat um, our insects, and that is one of their favorite treats that we use here. But um, Stress Less is also something that we recommend having on hand. The reason why it's called Stress Less is not a mental stress for your hedgehog, but it's a physical symptom of stress. When animals get stressed, the two main signs of something is wrong is not eating or green, do, green poop or diarrhea. Think of people the same way. When you get strange fright, what happens to us? Um, we get an upset stomach. Um, so Stress Less was designed with Pet Pro products to help those two things in mind. So Stress Less only has five ingredients. There's whole dried chicken, whole dried egg, sweet potato flour, probiotics and dried honey. So Stress Less is awesome to have on hand because hedgehogs like the taste of it and it puts a lot of nutrition in them if they're not eating. So um, again, we give it to our hedgehogs as a treat on our freeze dried insects. This is an example of our small Stress Less that we sell. We have two different sizes. Um, to be honest, the large size is the most economical. This is one example of our freeze dried insects. We again have two different sizes. The large size is the most economical. But for, um, <clears throat> for the sake of showing you what to do, what I do is take our stress less and put it on the bugs, shake it up like shake and bake. So think of, um, think of this like shake and bake or think of it like putting powdered sugar on your donut. Too much powdered sugar can make a mess, but it doesn't hurt anything. So then these powder coated bugs are what we put right on top of their food. And hedgehogs are lucky they get to eat dessert first. Again, that is our hedgehog's favorite treat, but um, you might find that your hedgehog is picky, it's unique, 
Um, so we always put that out there that there are the exceptions to the rule. Stressless is also good to have on hand if your hedgehog should, should not be eating. There are a lot of different reasons why hedgehogs might not eat. It could be they're nervous going to a new home, which is why we put it on the bugs and suggest that you have it. But other reasons down the road that your hedgehog might not eat is if it's not feeling well. So not eating is the number one sign something is wrong. And so our first step is always to put some stress less on the food. If you put the stress less on the food and it's all gone the next day, then you know, hey, everything is, is back on track, no problem. But if your hedgehog does not eat the next day, then you know something is more serious. Be lucky. And, and there are, um, there's another video that goes into this in more detail, and we'll put that in the um, description. So, um, so the next thing to do is if your hedgehog still doesn't eat when it's on the food, you can take the powder and sprinkle it on the hedgehog. You can take it and mix it with flour or olive oil and make a paste, wipe it on the hedgehog. The goal is for the hedgehog to be annoyed, to clean itself, and to get some nutrition in it. So it is awesome to have on hand for um, getting your hedgehog to eat again and to helping you decide if there's a, is there a significant problem or was the hedgehog just off for a night. So um, the second reason to have this on hand is if your hedgehog should get green poops, diarrhea, funky stools. Chances are it'll happen at some point in your hedgehog's life, but um, that is the number one sign of an upset stomach. Since we have started sending our customers home with Stressless, we have rarely gotten a call or email or distressed person. And so this is something that I strongly recommend for every hedgehog owner to have on hand. It is just great. You can use it as a treat if it's on the bugs or, um, or something like that, but it's also good to have as an emergency backup plan. And as you know, in the case of emergency, you need to have it on hand rather than trying to scrabble um, to try to order something at the last minute. So um, again, to recap, for our hedgehogs, what we suggest is giving a tablespoon of food a couple treats a day. There are also um, live insects that you can give your hedgehogs. Basically anything that you would buy as feeders. Um, be very careful. You don't want to give your hedgehog anything from the wild or from the bait shop because those insects can carry parasites and pesticides, most importantly parasites. So again, you can do live insects and you can get those at uh, various online resources or you can raise your own. So that being said, um, not all hedgehogs immediately catch on to live insects. So an easy way to get your hedgehogs to do live insects is to put them in a small container like so. Um, I use clear totes. You wanna put several bugs in there at once because you want it to seem like um, it's easy to catch them. So think of kitty fishing. When you're fishing with your kids, you want it to be real easy or they're gonna get bored. So with the hedgehogs and eating, you wanna make sure it's real easy for them to catch the bugs and to get them um, able to uh, see what they are. If your hedgehog doesn't catch on right away, what I suggest is covering that container with a towel and letting them be. It's really not fear factor. When do hedgehogs hunt? They hunt at night. And so with that, um, you can kind of give your hedgehog a quiet opportunity to discover what's in the cage with it. So that's our easiest way to uh, introduce your hedgehogs to insects. Once you know that your hedgehog likes them, I am not a fan of hand feeding because then the hedgehog associates your fingers with food and your fingers are gonna smell like that food. So I do suggest using feeding tongs to uh, feed your hedgehogs. Um, a couple other things that you can do to stimulate your hedgehog is that you can put the mealworms, live mealworms or whatever in the play and treat ball. You can hide them in dig boxes. You wanna make sure that the dig boxes are something that's easy to clean. You can put those live insects in a mealworm feeder that we have um, and let the mealworms come through the bottom of the container and just feed your hedgehog a few at a time. How your hedgehog cage is set up can make a difference on that. So with food, last but not least, 
The last thing is what to put your hedgehog food in. We tend to use either our small hedgehog food dishes or a large. Um, the small food dish is more than adequate for your food unless you're doing live insects. And then we suggest the large. A lot of times people will use um, the small one for treats, the big one for food. Ours are accustomed to the big. It really doesn't make any difference, but um, you do want to use, I personally like the smooth side, easy to clean ceramic dishes. Plastic dishes tend to get tossed around, flipped over. Um, it's fine if you don't mind a mess, but I like to keep um, the, the food in a dish. If you're using shavings or a fluffy bedding or something like that, I definitely recommend the larger size of food dish. So that's it on food. Um, if you have any questions, um, check out our other online videos, our other articles. And um, if you have a suggestion, again, we would love to set up a Zoom time with us. Message us through your um, or through our website. We can set up a Zoom meeting or leave a comment on what has worked for you and your experience. Um, and um, hopefully we can all learn a little bit more about diet and food. P.S. I forgot something. The one of the most popular questions that I get is um, what kind of treats outside of bugs do hedgehogs like? And can the hedgehogs eat fruits and vegetables? So remember in our anatomy, we were talking about um, hedgehogs do not have a cecum. A cecum is where plant matter is digested. So that being said, keep in mind, fruits and vegetables are very difficult for your hedgehog to digest. So they are not a nutritional support of things. So in some of the old, um, older, old school hedgehog information, it says to give hedgehogs um, mixed vegetables. I have read in some like frozen mixed vegetables. I've read that in some books. That is going to be more for taste and for fiber. The hedgehog is not going to have that as a nutritional part of their diet. So when I think about what is safe to give to hedgehogs, think of what you would give to a baby that's learning to eat with no teeth. I like things that are soft and easy to digest and easy to mash. So things like seeds, nuts, dried fruits, um, or anything hard like diced green beans, the raw green beans or broccoli or cauliflower, things that are hard for your hedgehog to mash, I would stay away from. There are so many other options of things that are good. So some easy examples would be diced apples, banana, berries, um, soft fruits, soft apples. If your fruit is on the mushy side, that's even all the better. Because what happens in nature, as fruit gets older, as it ages, it gets softer, which makes um, the, cell, the cells are being broke down inside the fruit, which in the long run is easier for the hedgehog to digest. So that bruised part of the banana that, um, that we wouldn't wanna eat, that would be a, a part of the hedge of the banana that your hedgehog might enjoy. The um, the older the fruit is, the sweeter it tends to get as well. So those fresh, crispy strawberries might not be as good as that overripe one from the garden, um, because the overripe one from the garden is going to be um, softer and sweeter for your hedgehog. So there are lots of different table foods. There are lots of different lists online. We'll put a link to our treat list from our website but um, there are foods from your table, scrambled eggs, hard boiled eggs. Those are good things that you can give your hedgehog. Small pieces of cooked chicken, cooked turkey. Um, use the general rule of thumb that if you would give it to a, a baby with no teeth, um, you wanna be, give your baby the best of foods possible. So I wouldn't do, um, you know, little pieces of hot dog by any means. I guess a hot dog is, is something that you wouldn't want to do. Um, but I have seen people use the Gerber um, chicken sticks because they're mashable. So um, those are some ideas of things you can use from your kitchen. Um, we talked about in um, the toy section about how uh, we have the tea pocket pals because they like scents. Other hedgehogs may like taste. So feel free to give your hedgehog a variety of things, even strong scented things like cilantro. Um, or parsley um, or spinach, those type things give it small amounts. The hedgehog may mash it. So as the hedgehogs 
um, self-anoint, they will mash their food. So if your hedgehog mashes that cilantro, it might be enjoying the strong flavor or the scent and, it, and they're likely to self-anoint with it. So you can also give it things for, for your hedgehog to mash. But if you have any um, specific questions, read our diet articles online. Um, they'll give you a lot more details into these topics. So toys are a fun topic. Toys are one of um, those things that your hedgehog can live without, but it will make your hedgehog's life happier and in return your life happier if your hedgehog plays with toys. And so um, one of our favorite toys, hands down, is mini solo cups. One summer I decided to see what would happen if I put some mini solo cups in some of our cages and to my surprise the hedgehogs love them. Of course your hedgehog will, will make me turn out to be a liar if your hedgehog hates them um, as with anything but um, when we started putting mini solo cups into our hedgehogs cages our hedgehogs personalities changed. They started being more active during the day because as I would feed the hedgehogs I would unstack the cups. So believe it or not the hedgehogs will stack the cups one on top of each other. Um, they will walk around with the cups on their head. They will even um, we include ping pong balls in their cages or small cat ball toys um, different types of balls in the cages they will get the ball stuck inside the cups um, they sleep with their heads in the cups so the um, mini red solo cups are hands down um, our hedgehog's favorite toy so I definitely suggest you having those and some balls with your hedgehogs um, the second and um, third thing actually that we put in our hedgehog cages are toilet paper tubes and um, just so you know, you want to make sure your toilet paper tubes are new so that they're sturdy and strong. Um, if the tubes um, get old and they, they play with them a lot, the ends of them can, can expand and then your hedgehog may get its hedgehog, it, its little head stuck. So always use new um, toilet paper tubes or another safety thing you can do is put a slit down the um, a down all the way down the tube so that the hedgehog won't get its head stuck but what I found is that if the tubes are new your hedgehog is fine but the the cups and the balls also get stuck in tubes um, so we have lots of fun watching the hedgehogs walk around with those three things that being said there are other toys that your hedgehog may enjoy so with that I'll do a little tour of our shop our toy department and we'll talk about those the first thing are different types of um, stuffed animals and things that you can put in the cage. This one, this Kong one, I love because it has lots of different textures on it and different hedgehogs like different textures. Mint sticks are very, very popular. They are probably our number one selling toy outside of the, um, the balls and the cups. Um, your hedgehog may absolutely love them. We have hedgehogs that have carried them around like it's their security thing. They do run out of mint, they can, um, they can lose their scent, but it's, I would say, equivalent to cats and catnip and hedgehogs and mint. You can also do different types of cat toys, which we have a variety of little mice and things that have different textures on them, again. Um, this is one of our products that we developed here um, out of a need. So um, hedgehogs are naturally burrowers and diggers. And so when um, a hedgehog is in its sleeping bag, they're gonna wanna root and dig and burrow to kind of get comfortable. So we wanted to put something in the cage that had texture to it so that the hedgehogs could dig and burrow on it and hopefully dig and scratch on the toy rather than on the sleeping bag because little fibers of the fleece can wrap around their toenails. So this is to encourage digging in the sleeping bag. To make this toy a little bit better, it has a reflective mat in it. So we call them hog pockets because there is a little pocket in here that has a reflective mat in it. Um, something else that you can do is you can use hot hands or these um, are a small pet shipping warmer. You can put them in the hog pocket and that will add a mini heater to your hedgehog. So if you're traveling or if your hedgehog is sick, if you have a power outage, anything like that, if you need to keep your hedgehog a little extra warm, this is something awesome to have in your emergency kit. You might not use it every day, but this is something I would have on hand. Our next toy is called a tea pocket pal. 
and they come in different shapes and um, different sizes and different styles. But basically, um, it's a think of it as a catnip a catnip toy for cats. This um, is a versatile, so you can change it. We found that hedgehogs like plain old black tea. Um, raspberry tea has been a another favorite, but um, you put the tea bag in here and offer it to your hedgehogs. Hedgehogs that are very attracted to different scents um, will use it as a, like I said, as a, a cat uses a catnip toy. So um, what's cool about these is you can put different herbs, different scents, different smells, things that you wouldn't necessarily want your hedgehog to eat, but just to have different scents for your hedgehog to explore. Um, again, you, we also have lots of different plushies that we encourage. The things you can do with plushies, with stuffed animals, with, um, we have different sizes of fleece things. Get them all smelly like you and then put them in the sleeping bag. Again, that is playing with a purpose because if they are smelly like you, when the hedgehog is sleeping in its sleeping bag, it is getting to know you and your scent and associating your scent with warmth, safety, and comfort. So that's what I call playing with a purpose. And again, remember, hedgehogs are diggers and burrowers. We keep our hedgehogs all group housed, so they're used to sleeping in um, with other hedgehogs, and the best place to be is on the bottom of the pile. So hedgehogs like to be in tight, cramped spaces. So um, use those toys to your advantage. And we have seen lots of hedgehogs that carry those toys around in their mouth, kind of like some um, children use security blankets. Um, there are different types of balls that you can get with different textures. We've talked about textures a lot. Some hedgehogs like movement. They like to push the balls. Other things like textures and other animals like scents. So those are all some things you can do. Speaking of textures, Another one of our favorite toys is the crinkle balls. Um, that is the next thing that we put in our hedgehogs cages for all of our groups is the crinkle toys. Since we use, when if you use shavings, it does limit what type of toys you can put in the hedgehog's cage because they can get um, they can get dirty. But you can certainly use those the fabric type toys in a playpen if you are using a shavings or something other than fleece mirrors. Um, are also another good um, example of something you can hang in the cage. Your he Many hedgehogs have been fascinated with their thing and enjoy them. Other hedgehogs completely ignore it. But it's something cheap, easy to put in your cage so that your hedgehog can enjoy. One last toy is our play and treat ball. This is another toy that your hedgehog may love or may hate. You unscrew it, put either its food in here, you could put its food in here so that it ha if it's if you have an obese hedgehog, um, that's a way to add activity is to put the food in the ball, let it push the ball around so the food comes out slowly. You have to be careful. You don't want to starve your hedgehog, so you have to make sure that your hedgehog figures out how to do it. But um, you can put different treats in the play and treat ball, or if your hedgehog ignores the treats in it, it's just a great toy to have in your cage. For our in-store customers, we do have a couple of pack toy packages. We hope you will consider um, getting your toys from us. Again, it makes a big difference to us for you to support us, but we do offer some, some deals um, because we appreciate your support. So the first one is the $15 cage package. The way it works is you pick $15 worth of toys and then you get um, three free toys from here. So, and you also get a mesh laundry bag. Um, and um, to put all your toys in. So our $15 cage, or excuse me, our $15 toy package is $15 worth of toys. A lot of our customers do two $5 toys, a $3 toy, and a $2 toy, or however way you reach $15. And then um, you get three free and a free laundry bag to wash your toys in because you wanna keep them safe when you're washing. We also, if you only want a few toys, we have a six for six toy section, and um, that will also give you a good start off to your hedgehog. Before we get into handling your hedgehog is bonding. And the reason we're gonna talk about bonding in this section is the more you get your hedgehog out of the cage, the more you're gonna like your hedgehog. We spent the first part of this video talking about how to keep your hedgehog safe and healthy. Um, this part of the video, um, we're gonna talk about how to keep your hedgehog happy 
and therefore you are happy because the, the more you enjoy your hedgehog, the better bond you're going to have with your hedgehog. So um, our bonding products um, work in a couple different ways. As we talk in, as we talk about handling, we're going to talk about two-handed handling. And two-handed handling is when you're playing with them on a table, a short table, or when you're playing with them on your bed or you have them out um, when they're crawling around and you need both hands to keep in control of them. The next step is one-handed. And in that one-handed handling, we're going to use a tunnel. And I like to have tunnels out when your hedgehog is playing so that your hedgehog has a place to retreat to when it's done playing. Sometimes they're running around so much and they start getting frantic and they're looking for a place to hide. So when your hedgehog starts looking for a place to hide or you think it might have it enough, show it the tunnel. The great thing about the tunnel is you can get used to touching your hedgehog. Hand a hedgehog is going to be your best bonding experience. Your hedgehog is going to relax the most where it's warm and dark and it feels like it has a place to hide. So your hand in this tunnel with your hedgehog is super duper great step in your, in your bonding um, with your hedgehog. So the next way to have your hedgehog out of the cage is to have free hands. The more you're able to do while you're playing with your hedgehog or bonding with your hedgehog, the more you're going to have it out of the cage. So there's a several different products that we have um, that are designed for you to be able to have your hedgehog safely outside of the cage. The first is our bonding bag. And I call this an open bonding bag because it's designed to stay open a little bit. The more you have your hedgehog out, the more it's going to learn your voice, the more it's going to learn your scent, and the more it's going to learn what goes on around it. It's in the bag. It is warm. It's dark. It's safe and comfortable for your hedgehog. So um, having your hedgehog out with you, you can see your hedgehog and it can see you. So the liners come with this for a couple different reasons. First, if it potties, you can change your liner. Believe it or not, that does happen. And um, when you're putting your liner in your bag, you want to make sure it's turned inside out so that the rough side, and you can see how it started to fray, the rough side is on the outside um, so that the smooth side is on the inside with your hedgehog. When you're putting your hedgehog in it, sit it down on the table or on your hand, make a little nest, put your hedgehog in the nest, pull it up, and just hold it for a minute. As you hold it for a minute, the hedgehog will calm down. It'll get comfortable. Then you can put it down in your bag. It also works the same for in the reverse. You want to get your hedgehog out of here. Instead of reaching down, which is very threatening, you pull the bag up and turn it inside out. And now your hedgehog can come out like this, much, much less stressful on your hedgehog. These two things you never want to leave in the cage. This has loose threads, so you never want to put those in. And this has a strap, so you don't want to put this in your cage. The next item to show you is what we call our peekaboo bags. And our peekaboo bags are a duffel shaped bag. They have a strap and they have a zipper. This is really important if you have a young person that does not always pay attention to something that's open because it's very easy to take the bag off and sit it down. And I have many instances of sleeping hedgehogs that were not truly sleeping, but the second they laid, they were set down, um, they made a break for it. So this has a zipper. And my favorite part of this is that it has a window. So even if you do require hedgy to be zipped when it's out of the cage, you still have an interaction window. And it's a lot of fun to see them peek out. Our next product for bonding is a scarf. We have two different sizes of scarves. We have a small one, which is what I would use, which has a pocket on the inside that your hedgehog can go in, has breathing holes. So now your hedgehog is with you wherever you go. Do you smart safety features with them? Our next one is very large. 
So these are items, these scarves are um, popular for our customers when they're ordering food or down the road. They, um, they are, they would come after um, the importance of an open bonding bag or a peekaboo when you're first starting out, in my opinion. This another important product that rank higher in order of importance when you're starting out is our what we call a cuddle collar. It is a racetrack. So it is definitely not a fashion statement, but it makes a pocket right here. So if you put your hedgehog here, it can crawl all the way around. So it's great for kids who aren't very great at holding them, but they can open it up. You can turn it. If the hedgehog keeps climbing around, you can turn it. If you need it to be a little tighter, one of our um, customers said when they were emptying the dishwasher or whatever, and they were gonna be moving, they put the, their arm through it to make it tighter so that the hedgehog didn't flop around as much. So the cuddle collars, we do have a deluxe bonding kit, which we'll talk about, but our, it, our deluxe bonding kit is our first three items, um, our bonding kit plus this, and you get a free toy when you do that. Um, so you can look for our deluxe bonding kit. Last but not least, are our crossover bags. These are a lot more popular with our guys, our older guys, I should say. So again, a window, but a crossover carry type bag. And we do change our patterns and our prints on a regular basis, so check back with us. So last, um, last thing in this bonding section is that um, I equate having the right bonding products to having a good bridle and saddle if you have a horse. So I have um, loved horses and I love riding, but I definitely know that having the right bridle and the right saddle makes a huge difference. So that's kind of how I equate the bonding products with your hedgehog. You can keep them alive and keep them safe, but if you have the right products to enjoy them, you're gonna have a better experience overall. So if I were to recommend one thing, I would recommend our bonding kit. And our bonding kits are, all of our products are handmade, so they're all a little bit different and they all have minor imperfections. If you have a major problem, please let us know, but just be aware our sizes may vary just a little bit or our styles may, may, may vary from item to item. So the first thing in our bonding kit is a sleeping bag. And the sleeping bag is important so that you can keep them alternated in your cage. I always like to have a clean bag when I'm holding them outside of the cage. If I'm using a sleeping bag, um, it's great to, to have a backup so that you can keep them clean. So our bonding kit comes with a sleeping bag. It comes with a tunnel and it comes with an open bonding bag and two liners. So that is $35. So you get, you basically get the liners for free. So if you were to do one thing, I would suggest the basic bonding kit. If you were to do two things, I would add on the cuddle collar for a lot more fun. You do get a free toy um, and you save a dollar. So if you have any um, products that you would like um, us to sell, uh, please let us know. Or if you're a crafts person and want us to try your products, send us a sample and let us know. So also message if you have something that um, you would like us to, um, to look at or to check out. Bathing is one of those topics that, that hedgehogs either love or hate, that breeders love to talk about or hate um, e each other about because there's so many different theories and thoughts of what's the best way to bathe a hedgehog. So um, what I'm gonna go on is my experience and what I have found that works for me. And so um, if you have another method of something, I would love to Zoom talk with you and or, and or share your video um, and we can go from there. So I know there's more than one way to, to, to bathe a hog. So I'm gonna tell you what works for us. Um, we use the bathroom sink or one of these tubs, depending on where we're at. Um, I like to put just enough warm water in that um, it gives you enough water to, to pour over the hedgehogs and just enough that you can hold your hedgehog in it. Some hedgehogs um, are going to want deeper water, some are going to want shallow water. Really you have to kind of work what's best for us. So um, for a hand bath, our bath kit comes with a tub and it also comes as a great play way to keep all your bath stuff together because you want to keep things organized and handy. So um, our bath kit comes with a tub. 
The next thing in our in our bath kit, and I'm going to talk a little bit about um, why um, why bathing is an important topic. Um, it's a, bathing is an important topic because the number one problem people contact us about is dry skin. We're in the Midwest and it gets very, very dry at times and very, very humid at times. And so different humidities can affect the skin at different ways. That's why it's important to monitor your hedgehog's humidity um, in its cage. And the thermometer that we sell does monitor both temperature and humidity so you know how much that's fluctuating. The, the thermometers that we have also tell you if the temperature and humidity range is comfortable or if it's too high or too low. And so obviously you wanna be in the comfortable range um, to help your hedgehogs. But if I had a choice, I would rather it be too humid than too hot because dry air dries out the skin. And so when skin is dry, it lifts up and flakes. So humidity can be a cause of dry skin. So we wanna know why is dry skin a problem? Well, when that skin flakes up, that creates an environment underneath there for bacteria buildup, for fungal buildup is the most common, or even mites. Mites is the second most common problem in hedgehogs, and mites happen when there's a healthy environment for them to grow. My philosophy is that mites are everywhere. We even has, have micro mites on our eyes, that uh, on our eyelashes, and there's mites in, the, in all different types of environments, not just wood bedding like wood mites, but there's also dust mites. And um, believe it or not, the most common mite that we see in hedgehogs is dust mites. So our bathing kit and some of our products are designed to help keep your hedgehog skin healthy, so to avoid those mites. So um, back to bathing. Um, the next thing in our um, bath kit is our skincare oil. And this is another part of bathing that breeders have a lot of different thoughts and experiences on. So um, I have learned to help hedgehogs dry skin naturally. And that started back in the old school days, probably in 1997, I believe is when I started this, is that I noticed when the hedgehog sometimes got dry skin. And um, I also know that an old school mite treatment is olive oil. And so as an old school mite treatment and as a, um, as a treatment for dry skin, I began using olive oil on the hedgehogs. How that impacts you as an individual owner though, you need to remember that I keep my whole room at a high temperature versus I'm not adding direct heat right above my hedgehog. So um, as far as thickness, the skincare oil that we use that I'll be talking about <clears throat> is much better for the skin than, than plain olive oil. But I'll, using plain olive oil is a way that um, reptile breeders will also control mites in, in their um, snakes. So it's the same kind of premise. So um, some breeders have found and, and recommend and say that, that oils can make dry skin worse or can make a problem worse. And in some cases that is definitely true. But from my experience using um, our skincare oils since um, it's been about 13 years now, and I don't know how many um, five gallon batches I've made up over the years, and how many literally thousands of hedgehogs have used this oil over the years. Um, we have seen such difference in, in our hedgehog skin. So what is in our NYX skincare oil? First, it's an oil that um, was recreated out of um, a desperate need to find something that worked for my daughter. Um, she is adopted and when she came to us from Ethiopia, she had a minor skin irritation on her inside of her knee. Well, the longer she was with us, the worse this problem became till she had a bloody mess on the side of her knee. And in going to the dermatologist, the dermatologist explained several things about dry skin that, that carried straight over to the hedgehog. First is we as parents want to keep our kids um, very clean. However, water has a pH, skin has a pH, and the pH of water can dry out our skin. Also, um, water strips the natural oils from our skin, and the natural oils can be a protective barrier. So bathing our hedgehogs or our kids can cause dry skin. The second thing is what we use on our, on our, um, on our skin. 
Anything with alcohols, salt, or petroleum byproducts can be drying to the skin. So I see a lot of people that recommend using Johnson & Johnson's or Aveeno, but what I found is if you read the ingredients, it does contain those, those things. And um, I do know that if you have a dry skin problem, those, problem, those products can make it worse. So what do we use? We use a, um, a organic foamy soap. I like to use the organic because I know for a fact that there's nothing in it that's gonna hurt the hedgehog if they should lick it off or I don't get it thoroughly rinsed, anything like that. And it's completely safe. So I like bubbles, so that's why we use the foamy soap. Back to the skin. So another cause of dry skin is called quilling. And quilling is when happens for two reasons actually when smaller quills are coming out and bigger quills are coming in or as the skin grows and expands new quills are needed to fill in those spaces so your hedgehog is going to shed a couple of different times um first you're there is going to be a transition from baby quills to juvenile quills and then juvenile quills to adult quills different hedgehogs transition between those phases differently um some hedgehogs it's a very smooth transition and you would never know they're quilling think of quilling as something like teething so there are times when children teethe and it doesn't hardly bother them at all and then there are other children that those that teething time can be very uncomfortable and make your and make um, them very aggravated and agitated and, and hurting so um think of quilling is equal to teething they all do it differently to different degrees so um our skincare oil is designed to help dry skin in a couple different ways that we've talked about. First, it has several different oils in it that have different skincare properties. It is olive oil based like we talked about, but it also has apricot kernel pumpkin seed oil in it. Some of those oils are um, for elasticity, some are for moisturizing and, and of course other of their properties as well. So um, there are a blend of different oils in it, which also makes it very lightweight. But in addition to the main oils in it, there's three essential oils in our in our um, in our skincare oil. And um, the first one, first two are rosemary and lavender. Rosemary and lavender are both naturally relaxing. So guess what? That really helps in bonding when they smell familiar, and it's a relaxing smell. So I like to use it on my hands when I'm handling them. So a next um, property of rosemary and lavender is they're naturally healing. So remember your hedgehog is gonna be quilling, new spines are gonna be erupting through, um, through the skin that's itchy, scratchy, and uncomfortable. So if that's something that is healing, it's good for your hedgehog as well. Finally, rosemary and lavender are both natural mite and lice deterrents. We already talked about mites are a potential issue with hedgehogs and um, the rosemary and lavender are not gonna make them go away essentially but they were they are a deterrent so those dust mites that might be in your bedroom with your hedgehog it kind of deters them from coming there um we recently had a question if hedgehogs can get fleas and if your house does have a flea problem your hedgehog may also have a flea problem but chances are your hedgehog is not going to be the instigator of the problem it would be your other pets um so um back to the skincare oil rosemary and lavender have a lot of good purposes um, and so i think they're important to have in there plus they smell really nice the third oil that is in our skincare oil is calendula oil calendula oil is in the the flower family the marigold family and it has three important properties it's antibacterial antifungal and anti-inflammatory we love this oil um, as it it helps the skin in so many different ways. They're pretty obvious. So um, we use our skincare oil that's called NYX, which NYX stands for um, Natural Ingredients Intentionally Selected to be Kind for the Environment and Safe for the Family. So we use it, I use it on my hair, I use it as on, a, on my body. Um, I've used it in all different kinds of ways myself as, as well as a hand oil. We've also had um, customers that have found it very, very helpful for their eczema. So our skincare oil, you can put it directly on the hedgehog, um, directly on its skin, and it will spread out evenly over its back. So you can learn more about um, how to do bathing and how to put it on in our, um, in our separate um, videos. 
Another thing that comes in our bath kit is our bath soaks. Um, we suggest doing a regular bath once a month, but you can do an oatmeal soak once a week. So an occasion when to do an oatmeal soak is if your hedgehog is starting to have dry skin. So you could do that every day, every other day. Um, our bath soaks come in a three pack. So um, again, to recap, once a month for a regular bath, once a week if you need to do an oatmeal soak. Our oatmeal soaks are homemade. Um, they have milk powder. Our oats are infused with our skincare oil, which helps um, in, in the bath water. And there's natural lavender in it as well. So um, if you're in a pinch and you need to do an oatmeal soak, simply take an old sock and some oatmeal and make your water milky. When you're doing an oatmeal bath, you can leave it on your hedgehog. You don't necessarily need to rinse it off. So after your bath, using the soap or the um, oatmeal soak, you wanna make sure your hedgehog is really dry. And um, so the first thing that I do is I use a paper towel to get most of the water off but then I use one of our bath pockets like this to make sure it's warm and dry. Um, keeping it dry is really important as to help prevent respiratory infections. Another way your hedgehog can get sick during a bath or have a problem is if you get water in its ear. It's always a good idea and super important to keep water away from their ears, nose, eyes, and mouth. Um, we just wanna keep them as healthy and safe as possible. And it's, um, there's always a risk of them um, aspirating or, get, or um, getting a respiratory infection or something like that. So just avoid those areas. Also, if moisture is in the ear, um, they can get an inner ear infection or they can get a fungal infection. So just avoid those areas. After a bath is the best time to trim nails because the nails are clean and soft and hopefully your hedgehog is relaxed. We have a couple different types of nail trimmers. We have the scissor type, which is what I typically use. And then we also have a clipper that has a magnifying glass. Um, as I get older, the magnifying glass is um, helpful to me because um, my eyes aren't as good as they used to be. Um, you could also use a toothbrush um, or a bath brush. I personally like a bath brush to go over the hedgehog's bath. It just covers more surface area. I like it better, especially if it's a squirmy hedgehog. Um, I also like to use a small brush. We have a limited number of these. Um, we only have a few left, but um, this works great to hold their feet um, and to get their feet. So I like the bigger brushes for their back. I like the smaller brush for their feet. Um, Last but not least, we have a product called Quill Shine. A um, little bit of a trade secret here, or a big trade secret. It is actually a natural horse product, um, but you don't need a full gallon of it. So this is a, a moisturizer you can spray on. It's great to use in between the oil so your skin doesn't get too clogged up with oils all the time. Um, so that's another great product. So that's an overview, our bath kit comes with um, a mix of these and, and things, or if you wanna do just one thing, um, the skincare oil. So we have talked about oils a lot, and I do know that um, there are breeders that are against oil. So just use the information that you have and decide what's best for, for you and your hedgehog. Topic that we're gonna talk about is healthcare and health concerns. Um, it's something that's really important if you're if you have a hedgehog and you you want to be prepared for what could happen or if you're thinking about getting a hedgehog it's important to know what areas your hedgehog might be prone to issues with so the first and most common issue that we get here in Ohio is dry skin dry skin on the actual body of the animal but also dry nose or dirt on the nose and I'll explain that in just a minute um, or dry ears um, Dry skin is often associated with bacterial or fungal infections, so you have to be careful. So the very basic is just a little bit of dry skin, and that's very, very common, and it happens just because of our humidity, or lack of humidity, I should say, where we live. So um, breeders in other parts of the country may not have, or owners in other parts of the country may not have the dry skin issues like we do. So um, first off, we've already talked in our bathing 
um, section about our skincare oil, NYX skincare oil, and Quill Shine. Both of those are good things to use that we have found in our experience to help prevent dry skin or to treat minor dry skin. If your hedgehog has large flakes um, of dry skin and is flaking heavily, you might want to give it a bath. And I would start simply with a traditional bath and then a traditional treatment for um, dry skin. If that doesn't work, the next step would be an oatmeal bath. An oatmeal bath is going to be more soothing. We do have oatmeal baths in our store as well, and you can use those approximately once a week. Now, sometimes when you give your hedgehog a bath, you'll find that what was really looked like dry skin was actually just bedding dust if they're using a shaving or a paper bedding or litter dust or something like that. So having a good, healthy, clean skin will give you an idea of how dry your skin or your hedgehog skin actually is. The next step is pretty, I would say moderate to severe dry skin. That's when you're seeing large flakes of dry skin. When you have dry skin, basically the healthy skin is like this, dry skin is like this, and when you have dry skin, stuff likes to live underneath there. So um, as a preventative measure, something very safe and something that we do um, is to use a chlorhexidine bath. Um, we use a chlorhexidine solution. Chlorhexidine is used in um, surgical, as a surgical scrub, as um, dental hygienists have told us that they use it. It's all different areas of the medical field in humans. This happens to be for animals. Um, it's, it's no different really. The active ingredient in it is chlorhexidine glutinate and they come in different concentrations and this is just a generic version. What I love about chlorhexidine, especially this, is that it's a concentrate. So one ounce of this blue stuff makes a gallon of a chlorhexidine solution. So this, um, this container would make 16 gallons of a cleaning solution. And so I would make a gallon of your chlorhexidine solution and bathe your hedgehog in that just to make sure, um, kind of like you would wash your hands with an antimicrobial soap or an antibacterial soap. The same kind of thing. Not very invasive, not very um, dangerous or anything like that. Um, some breeders have used a CVS version of the chlorhexidine glutinate and it is a little bit more relaxing. The CVS version was recommended by a breeder friend to me because she thought it was a little less drying than straight um, chlorhexidine. Um, it is more soapy, it has more bubbles, so um, I have mixed feelings. Sometimes I use the plain chlorhexidine and sometimes I use the soapy. I like the plain chlorhexidine solution because it also works as a great disinfectant to clean your cage out, to clean your food dishes, things like that. So I do like to keep it in a spray bottle to spray inanimate objects as well as a rinse to use on, on your hedgehog. So if you're buying a product, make sure that it's safe to use on your animal or in this case, it is a human product and I have to be very careful when um, prescribing um, advice, um, veterinary advice. Um, I'm not a veterinarian. And so I will say, if in doubt, always ask your veterinarian or have it checked out. So the next step, after you've tried um, the, the skincare oil, the, um, the baths and the chlorhexidine, then it would, I would say it would be time to go to a veterinarian. If you're losing large amounts of, qu of quills, your hedgehog could just be quilling, which is normal and we've already talked about that, but you should start to see new quills grow in um, after your skin is clear. But if you're still having problems with dry skin, you may need to go to a veterinarian. If you're seeing baldness or lot, lots of baldness, um, it would definitely be a good idea to have that checked out. Um, because as I said, there could be a bacterial or fungal infection. We rarely see that in our hedgehogs because we keep their skin in good condition and take care of a little problem before it turns into a big problem. So it's very rare that we would need to do any further treatment here at Critter Connection. I did mention that sometimes you'll see dirt on nose if you use a shavings. They, are, they do um, root and dig and burrow. Um, and sometimes you'll see dry ears. I like to use plain olive oil on the nose and the ears and sometimes on their feet. Um, if you see dryness, you can rub that in and that should come off very easily. On the ears, 
um, you might see finger-like projections. And those um, finger-like projections um, can be a fungus. And um, you can soften that with a shea, shea nut oil or something, a uh, coconut oil and soften that and kind of pick at it very gently to get those to come off. But ask your veterinarian about using a topical antifungal to help treat that and get those ears cleaned up. And if you should see any scabs or crust or um, things like that, you definitely want to have a veterinarian check those out. They might prescribe you or ask them if you should do the chlorhexidine rinses to help with that. And that may take care of it, but um, you do want to pay closer attention if, there's, if there are scabs. Um, or because it could be a bacterial infection requiring oral antibiotics. So not to scare you too much. Um, as I said, it's rare that we get a customer that needs, that is in correspondence with us, that needs to go to a veterinarian um, if they're taking proper care of their skin. Um, but sometimes things do pop up. The, the most preventable health problem is false hibernation. Hedgehogs can go into a false hibernation when their temperature gets too low. They become, some of them become more lethargic to where they they don't move they're they act like they're walking in slow motion or they're moving in slow motion other hedgehogs will ball up and not uncurl um, many times they will feel cool to the touch and so um that can be very dangerous because when that hedgehog goes into false hibernation their body slows down they don't want to eat and it's hard to get them going again and, it, and they can die especially if they are cool already so you to treat false hibernation, first is you wanna get them warmed up and you wanna warm them up gently. You can warm some towels in the dryer um, or and have and wrap them in warm towels. Um, better yet, if you have them in a sleeping bag, tuck them next to you, get them close to you because um, your natural body heat will help warm them up slowly and, um, and carefully. Um, you wanna be careful putting them on a heating pad um, because they could get burnt on a heating pad even at lower temperatures. So always be careful with the heating pad, but um, in an emergency situation like a false hibernation, a low heat may also may work for that. So you definitely wanna get them um, warmed up, but that is one of the most preventable um, accidental pet deaths and probably the most common accidental pet deaths. So um, monitor your temperature. We like to use a thermometer that records the high and low temperatures of the day. And with um, technology as it is, you can even get um, thermometers that alert your phone when a temperature reaches a range. So pay close attention to your, your hedgehog's temperature. That's why we always recommend 75 to 85 and always err on the warm side rather than the cool side of things. So pay close attention to your hedgehog's temperature. If you message us um, that you have a problem with your hedgehog, that will be one of the first questions that I'm gonna ask is, what is your temperature range? Because temperature can affect not only a false hibernation, but they can decrease in the amount of eating that they eat just because they don't feel as, um, as comfortable. I've also found that hedgehogs are in a, more, in a much better mood at warmer temperatures than at cooler temperatures. So keep an eye on those temperatures. Unfortunately, cancer strikes small animals just like it does people at all different ages. We do our very best to produce healthy animals. We watch our bloodlines. We, um, we are selective in who we breed, but even then there's no way to um, weed out cancer or prevent cancer um, just like there isn't in people. We have children's hospitals because bad stuff happens to kids. So unfortunately, Cancer is one of, is prevalent in small animals, including hedgehogs, just like it is in people. So if, um, if you notice a lump or a mass, it's always a good idea to have your hedgehog checked out. Sometimes those um, cancers hide, just like they do in people. Your hedgehog might slow down and might get more lethargic and might eat less, less active. So as your hedgehog gets older, keep in mind that cancer, cancer can affect them. So have it checked out and then that will be when you and your veterinarian decide is, is this something that's treatable or is this a um, something that we wanna provide palliative care and keep your hedgehog comfortable and, and, and pain-free as long as possible. But it, um, we have seen very successful skincare um, or skin 
cancer surgeries that have have worked successfully, but um, there are times when those cancers do come back. So unfortunately, cancer kills a lot of hedgehogs just like it does people. Wobbly hedgehog syndrome is by far the most misdiagnosed and most unfortunate disease in hedgehogs. True wobbly hedgehog syndrome is actually quite rare. Um, uh, I have worked with a, a researcher in, at the University of Wisconsin and he has found that it is much, far less prevalent than we once thought. What happens is a lot of other diseases and disorders are misdiagnosed. Hedgehogs can wobble for a lot of different reasons. Um, those false hibernation attempts that we talked about already. Um, also, hedgehogs that have stopped eating or not eating as much, they can get dehydrated and they can um, get basically malnourished. That can also cause wobbling. So um, sometimes animals will be sick from one one ailment or one illness and they get dehydrated or they get almost to the point of starvation and they start wobbling. Um, a true wobbly um, hedgehog disease um, starts out very typically very gradual. It's a slow um, demyelination of the neurological sheath and the nerves and so it's a gradual progression. So if your hedgehog suddenly starts wobbling, that should be a number one sign that is probably not wobbly hedgehog syndrome. We have uh, several different articles and another video that talks about wobbly hedgehog syndrome. So if you suspect that your hedgehog has wobbly hedgehog syndrome, please be sure to check those articles out because there have been many hedgehogs that could have, their lives could have been saved if they had not been misdiagnosed. Think of um, wobbling, I kind of equate it when I'm explaining it to people. When someone vomits or someone throws up, doesn't mean they have stomach cancer. They can be sick from food poisoning, from a virus, from um, riding on the roller coaster. There are a lot of different reasons why people might vomit. Vomiting is a, simple, is a symptom of, an, of, another, of, of another problem, just like wobbling can be a symptom of several different pro problems. So have those um, problems checked out just to make sure that um, you get your hedgehog proper treatment. Another problem um, that pops up in hedgehogs is respiratory illnesses. Respiratory infections can happen for a variety of reasons, but the most common is getting too cold or aspirating water during a bath. So when you're bathing your hedgehog, always avoid the ears, nose, and eyes and avoid um, putting your hedgehog back in his cage wet or damp. Keeping your hedgehog warm and dry is one of the best things that you can do, and out of drafts especially, is one of the best things you can do to prevent respiratory infections. The next issue that I'm gonna talk about is also related to bathing, and that is cutting nails. The best time to trim nails is after a bath, but be cautious because they do have a blood vein in there. If you should happen to cut the blood vein, you will see blood pretty common um, to have a wiggly hedgehog or to have eyes like mine that are getting older and it's hard to see. So if you should have, so as you're looking for the nail, you'll see a clear part of the nail, just like we have a clear part to our nails. And in inside that nail is a blood vein. So just tip off the tip of the nails rather than trying to get real close to that quick. Um, if you do, um, cut the blood vein and you see some blood, it probably will look much worse than it actually is. There are a couple things that you can do. If you would have a styptic powder or um, something that you would use for dogs or cats when you're trimming nails, that could work. But in a pinch, you could try some plain old um, flour or cornstarch to let your hedgehog walk through that to kind of coat the nail so to help stop up that bleeding. Um, if you do trim the, the nail and hit the quick, um, be sure to take the wheel out because what can happen is that as the hedgehog is running on the wheel, it basically is, uh, and if it potties on the wheel at the same time, it's basically grinding poop germs into an injury. And we don't want that to happen. So if you, if you do have a nail injury, make sure you take that wheel out, make sure the litter box is really clean and make sure that foot stays as clean as possible. The last thing that we're gonna talk about in this section is green poop. And green, slimy, funky, mucusy poop happens for a lot of different reasons, just like our bowels get out of whack for a lot of different reasons. My main line of defense about against funky poop is our stressless. Stressless is a very cheap insurance policy. 
It only has five ingredients, whole dried egg, um, whole dried chicken, sweet potato flour, probiotics, and dried honey. Most hedgehogs tend to like it, so it tastes good. Um, and then when we put it on their food, what it does is it helps to slow down the digestive tract. Sweet potato flour um, slows things down so that the probiotics and dried honey can help put things back in balance. Um, I'm not sure 100% all the science on it, but what I do know is that it has made a world of difference to our mamas, to our babies. Um, when animals try new treats, sometimes they get an upset stomach for whatever reason. Our stress less is one of the big things that we use, not only to help funky poops, but to help hedgehogs when they're not eating. Not eating is another problem that can arise related to stress. Um, not eating is the first sign that something can be wrong. So again, as we've talked about already, watch your temperature, make sure your temperature is in an acceptable range. So then the next line of defense is I put the stress less on the food. If your hedgehog still doesn't eat, it's real important to get them eating soon. So my next line of defense is to put um, the stress less on the quills. You can either shake it on like in a powder, you can mix the stress less with water and make a paste and wipe it on. I've even um, mixed the stress less with some olive oil to make a thick, chunky kind of paste to put on the hedgehog. So what happens is hopefully the hedgehog gets annoyed, it cleans itself, licks the stress less off, and that's enough to jumpstart um, the body. I've also used that for babies that have um, struggled eating, um, or if even if you have an older hedgehog that um, may have had some dental issues, um, as they age, um, hedgehogs can lose teeth and have mouth problems, just like we have as we get older. So if your hedgehog is having a hard time crunching its kibble, you might find that grinding the kibble um, makes it much easier for your hedgehog to eat. But um, in the case of a hedgehog that suddenly stops eating, um, stressless is my number one line of defense. If your hedgehog doesn't eat after the second day, I would start to um, get concerned and you'll want to see a veterinarian. All of these things that we've talked about, if in doubt, you definitely want to see a, a veterinarian. If your hedgehog is bleeding um, from anywhere other than a toenail, I definitely suggest seeing a veterinarian right away. If you see any masses, any lumps, any scratches, um, any eye issues, you want to see a veterinarian right away. Um, so hopefully these health tips helped you and help, will help keep your hedgehog healthy. Hopefully you will never need any of these tips, but just to have in the back of your mind some of the things to look out for will hopefully help you take care of your hedgehog for a long and happy life. In this section, I'm going to share with you my top 10 tidbits and tips on how to handle hedgehogs. I'm not going to have hedgehogs out while I go over the tips with you because they're a huge distraction. So listen to these tips and then at the end, we'll go through and show you how to handle hedgehogs based on these tips and how to use them. So the first tip is that hedgehogs do not like scary or annoying people. Either do I. So how that relates is we need to learn what is scary and what's annoying for a hedgehog because the way that we handle them can make their personality either better because they're more comfortable or it can make their personality worse because they're scared or annoyed. The next tip is to remember that hedgehogs are big scaredy cats. They're big chickens. If I were to compare them to another animal, it would be to a turtle. Imagine what a turtle does when a, when a turtle gets scared. It hides. Hedgehogs are the same way. When they get scared, they hide. They tuck their, they tuck their head so that you can't see them. The more scared they are, the more they ball up and the more they act defensive. So we want to make sure that we're not scaring our hedgehogs. As with a turtle, you don't tap on a turtle shell to have it come out. The same way with hedgehogs. You can't tap them, touch them, or try to pet them to help them relax. The way you would a dog or a cat, you can pet or another animal to help it calm down. A hedgehog will just become more annoyed, more scared, and more irritated. And you can actually do more harm than good petting your hedgehog when your hedgehog isn't ready. The next tip is to watch for the X. When hedgehogs have their spines up, their spines make an X. I always ask kids at our, at our shop in our learning center, what does X mean? Does X mean stop or go? X means stop. Does X mean touch or don't touch? X means don't touch. So if your hedgehog is saying, stop, don't touch me, 
it's saying it's scared, nervous, or irritated. If you touch it, it will make it more scared. Instead, wait till your hedgehog relaxes before you try to approach it or pet it in any way. Hedgehogs can sense air movement. Think of yourself trying to take a nap on the couch. Your eyes are closed and somebody walks by. You know they walked by, but you're aware it wasn't very irritating or anything at all. But if they stop next to you and your eyes are closed, you can feel their presence and you know that they're there. If that person waves their hand in front of your face like this, your eyes are closed, you're trying to sleep, now you're really annoyed. So keep in mind, hedgehogs, even though their hands, heads are tucked when they're hiding, they can sense air movement around them. So even if you don't think your hedgehog can see the movement, the hedgehog can, can sense the air movement, kind of like if you were to close your eyes and wave your hands in front of your face. So watch out for those air movements or that distraction that's gonna cause your hedgehog to be scared. Next, when you pick your hedgehog up out of its cage, it's much easier to pick your hedgehog up out of the cage if your hedgehog is in something. If you have a sleeping bag that your hedgehog is sleeping in or one of our hidey beds or something like that, it's much, much easier to pick an object up out of the cage with your hedgehog in it rather than trying to reach in and pick the hedgehog up out of its cage. Picking it up is one of the scariest parts of handling hedgehogs. So we strongly suggest using a sleeping bag or something like that to pick your hedgehog up out of the cage. That way your hedgehog is not being grabbed um, by your bare hands. If you do need to pick your hedgehog up out of the cage, feel free to use gloves so that you can pick your hedgehog up with confidence rather than making a, a scary um, adventure. Because the next tip is picking up prickly, falling is fine. And that's how it relates to picking up your hedgehog in something. Hedgehogs are very defensive when they're picked up because again, they don't like that downward hand motion. But if you pick them up out of a sleeping bag, you can tilt the sleeping bag or whatever, a tunnel or something like that, so that the hedgehog kind of slides down like it's going down a slide. It's much easier for you to have the hedgehog in a bag and slide your hand up rather than having your hand reach down. So anytime you can pick your hedgehog up in something or your hedgehog can slide down out of a sleeping bag, it's much, much better because remember, picking up's prickly, falling is fine. We also wanna make sure since your hedgehog isn't afraid of falling, that when you're handling it outside of the cage, you have to be careful on your hands because they will just walk right off your hands. Something else to remember when you're thinking of picking up is prickly but falling is fine is that hedgehogs will climb the sides of their cage if they have a wire cage. So you wanna remember to put a barrier around that. We talked about that in our cage setup situation, but I wanna bring that point back home again here. Falling is fine in controlled circumstances. When you're passing your hedgehog from one person to another, you can simply open your hands and let it pass from one to another. So that would be a controlled fall. So again, falling is fine, picking up is prickly. The next tip that's really hard to master, but very simple is flat hands, the hedgehogs will put their feet down. Bold hands, your hedgehog will stay balled up. It's our natural instinct to want to hold our hedgehog in, in, a, in a, our hands cupped so that they don't fall. But your hedgehog will have a harder time relaxing. Sometimes just simply opening your hands up and I always point the hedgehog's nose down like this so that um, the hedgehog will kind of feel like it's falling a little bit. You're in control, but as your hedgehog feels like it's falling, it'll come out and almost put its brakes down. So it'll put its front feet out to keep it from falling because they don't want to completely slide. But having flat hands will help your hedgehog put its feet down. If you have bold hands, it will stay balled up. So sometimes just making this simple adjustment and handling will be a huge difference in how fast your hedgehog comes out of its ball. The next tip is to play who's the boss with your hedgehog. That's the simple game and where you let your hedgehog feel like it's in control. So you, now that your hedgehog is awake and it has the opportunity to move around, as it's moving around, simply relax your hands onto your lap. As your hedgehog is on your lap, it can now have space to move around. As it crawls around and explores, um, it will feel more comfortable with you. So think of yourself as a human mountain and, and 
as a play area for your hedgehog to explore. So when I'm playing who's the boss with my hedgehogs, I let them crawl around on my lap. If they go towards my knees, I simply pull the edge of the blanket up so that the hedgehog has an, a natural barrier so it doesn't go off my knees. If your hedgehog goes to the right or to the left, we're gonna put your hands to the edge. And that way, as the hedgehog walks, it feels like it's walking onto your hand. Your hedgehog can decide to stop before it goes onto your hand, or it will continue to walk on your hand and you can pick it up and redirect it. This works great if you have a couple people on a couch playing um, together so that your hedgehog has more room to explore, or if you're sitting on a lazy boy, kick back and relax. Your hedgehog can also crawl up you. So if you kick back even further and let your hedgehog explore you, don't try to control it, but simply let it explore. Most likely it will find your armpit because it's warm and dark and a place to hide. That's great because then your hedgehog feels like it's safe and secure. If your hedgehog does go for your armpit, remember the rule, picking up prickly, falling's fine. In this case, your hedgehog will be in your, in your armpit. You'll put your right hand or whatever hand is, is free underneath and let your hedgehog fall down instead of trying to pick your, up your hedgehog from here. If your hedgehog should try to climb on your shoulder, again, let it try to fall down on your hand rather than trying to pick it up from the top. Or you can slide your hand underneath your hedgehog to like lift it up. So again, when your hedgehog is on your lap, you can use the edge of your blanket to pull it up so it doesn't go off your knees, but allow your hedgehog to walk on your hands. Avoid trying to make a barrier with your hands like this, because then your hedgehog thinks that your hand is bad. So your, head, your hand is telling it no. I kind of think about the analogy of little kids at the playground. You don't stay at the edge of a playground and tell the, the young child, no, 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 stay away from the edge. You say, hey, look over here. So in this case, the hedgehog walks onto your hands and you can reposition it to a better place. This method also works great on a small table. And if you have two people on, and so that you have at least two people, so you have each side of your, head, of your table um, guarded, you can allow the hedgehogs to explore on the table. And then as they go to walk off the table, your hand will be right there to let them walk on the edge. That way you're having hand boundaries for flat hand boundaries versus blocking hand boundaries. So again, play who's the boss and let your hedgehog feel like it's the boss as much as possible. Next, time is key. The more time you spend with your hedgehog, the more you're gonna learn its personality, its quirks, its habits, and its differences. Every personality is different for every hedgehog. So um, a lot of times people are surprised when their first hedgehog has a different personality than their second hedgehog or you might be surprised that your hedgehog has a different personality when it's with the breeder than with they get, when it gets home. Different circumstances, different environments can make different personality um, quirks or habits. There are hedgehogs, especially if they're older, who may take a lot more time because they may have um, different fears or different annoyances of people ingrained in them. So you may have to spend a lot of extra time with older hedgehogs that are not used to being handled. So in many ways, a younger hedgehog is easier, um, but definitely work with your breeder to handle your hedgehog before you take it home so that you can see what its personality is like. That's my number one tip. But keep in mind, you wanna spend a lot of time. The more time you spend with your hedgehog, the more you're gonna find um, its unique its uniqueness and how you can handle it best. So the more you have it out of the cage, the better. Something else to remember when you're picking up your hedgehog is to just do it. Picking up's prickly, so you want to get it over for your hedgehog as fast as it can. I kind of compare it to getting a shot. When a nurse is gonna give you a shot, you don't want the nurse to aim at you and talk about it for five minutes. You just want the nurse to do it and get it over with. So when hedgehogs are being picked up, they just want you to pick them up and get it over with. Last but not least, use the right tools when you're working with your hedgehog handling and bonding. I kind of compare this to owning a horse. You can have a barn, you can have a fence, you can have all the right food, but if you don't have the right equipment, you're not gonna enjoy your horse as much as if you have a saddle that fits and a bridle that works well with your horse. So have the right tools with handling and bonding your hedgehogs. 
um, the carriers, the bonding sacks, and things like that all have a purpose and ways to help you better connect with your hedgehog. Keep in mind, hedgehogs can have a little bit of bedhead when they first wake up. That's, they just don't know what's going on, just kind of like we do. I kind of like to compare it to myself. I do much better after a cup of coffee in 20 minutes than when I first wake up. So hedgehogs might be in a completely different mood 20 minutes or five minutes or two minutes after they first wake up rather than just waking. You can see that one hedgehog is kind of looking around, is more curious, it's in a different, it's in a different location and different spot than what it was before. So when I pick them up, I'm gonna just reach in and do it. As I pick him up, he balled back up, which is completely normal. He is huffing and puffing, saying, stop, don't touch me. I'm scared, annoyed, or irritated. My hands are flat so that he can look around. If this is not comfortable for you, it's, they're very prickly, do not hesitate to use gloves so that you can pick out your hedgehog with confidence and that you um, can be more secure in handling the hedgehogs itself. So as you can see, he's coming awake more. He's moving around and he's feeling much more comfortable. This is where um, you could put them down on your lap to let them start to explore. A couple things I wanna show you though is the moving from below. You can see he's not afraid of my hand. So my hand is below him. So as I pet him, what I'm doing is I'm creating, I'm starting with his nose and working my way back. As he tunnels through my hands, he's putting his quills down. So this is an example of starting below your hedgehog to pet him rather than come from it coming from behind. So this hedgehog is ready to be down exploring on me. I always suggest moving your hair back if you want your hedgehog to crawl around. Or this is also a time we can, when you can let your hedgehog down on a table. If you have a treat for your hedgehog, now would be a good time to introduce a treat. This is our chicken wrap banana treat and one of our most popular hedgehog things. So if, you're, if having your hedgehog out and giving it a treat is a great way to help your hedgehog look forward to waking up. If it knows that it gets a treat every time, it'll be in a much happier mood and much better wake up. If you notice the hedgehog that's eating the, the treats, he's getting real close to the edge. What I'm gonna do is put my hand toward the edge so that the hedgehog can move away or toward, but he's not being intimidated by my hands. Also notice his spines are still a little up. And so that's saying, stop, don't touch. And so I'm not gonna approach it, but he's totally enthralled by the treat. And so he's letting me be close to him. I'm gonna lift him up and move him closer to the edge. Having your hedgehog out on a table will give you plenty of time to get to know your hedgehog, let it move around and um, see something that it enjoys. What this hedgehog is doing is called self-anointing. He has mashed up um, part of the treat to basically flavor his spit with the chicken wrap banana. What he wants to do is camouflage himself with that treat spit, if you will. They only do the self-anointing if they feel comfortable. As you can see, this is a very, very vulnerable position for your hedgehog. So what he is saying is he's very, very comfortable with my hand around him. He's not scared. He's just simply a little uncomfortable from the quilling process. So the quilling is another reason why your hedgehog might be in a bad mood. As I mentioned, they are, they are juveniles, and so they're gaining a lot of big adult quills. That's itchy, scratchy, and uncomfortable. That hurts. So um, pay attention to the quilling um, process and how that quilling process alone might make your hedgehog more uncomfortable. Another example of picking up your hedgehog when it's in something, this is a tunnel and the hedgehog crawled in it while it was exploring on the table. There's two ways to get your hedgehog out when it's in a tunnel. First, you can pick your hedgehog up and let it relax. If it's huffing and puffing, just let it sit on your hands until it calms down. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tilt the sleeping, the tunnel up and my hand is gonna go up at the same time. 
my hand is sliding right underneath the hedgehog and the hedgehog is sitting on my hand. If it balls up, if your bag is a little tight, you can just let it simply relax and the hedgehog is kind of balled up but sitting on my hand. If it takes time for your hedgehog to relax, that's okay. The pressure is not real great and it's a little tight with my head my hand in here and he is not fully awake but you can see with time and patience he is slowly coming out you can also do it the other way that was bottom first you can also do it head first so we'll let him go back in If you do it head first, my hand is sliding right underneath. And head first, this little guy is coming out easier, but he was balled up. So again, letting your hedgehog slide down, whether it's in a sleeping bag, you can go head first or tail in first, but rump first. Getting to know your hedgehog and how it comes out will make it easier to have you help pick it up in the future. So spending time getting to know the way your hedgehog likes to wake up will make the wake up process go more smoothly. This is another reminder that time is key. The way the hedgehogs first woke up when I first took them out of the carrier and I've put them in and out of the carrier is different. It takes them each of the three hedgehogs, different amounts of wake up time, different amounts of time before they relax and move around. So you might be sitting at your table or with your hedgehog on your lap and your hedgehog might take um, any amount of time to wake up. The key is not to move above it, not to move towards it, and to be as calm and patient as you can. As you can see, the one that had a treat earlier found it again, and he is going to town on that. So if you can try different scents, different things that you think your hedgehog might, different treats, we carry of several different types of treats so that you can have a treat out. This hedgehog was very quick to learn what the treat was and that he wanted to relax so that he can enjoy it. Another hedgehog is sneaking up to it who who is um, not yet anointing but he is learning that um, he just stole the treat from the other one um, and so it's not going to be long before he relaxes and starts doing the self anointing at the same time. This little guy is being shy but if you notice he's coming out he's moving around and the longer we wait, the more these guys will be acclimated to their new environment. This is the first time they've been out here and on display in a video. So they're just getting comfortable with, going, with what's going on around them. So far, two out of three of our guys like the chicken wrap banana treat. Let's try it with our third one. I'm just gently moving it towards them, keeping my hands low to avoid the over and down movements. If you saw that, that one was just a little annoyed. They're both loving the treat. But you can see they're not huffing, they're not puffing, they're not completely relaxed because they're not that comfortable yet, um, but they're getting there. And again, these three boys are going through a very tough quilling process. Um, and so they are not completely relaxed and completely at ease as they would of some of our easier ones, but I chose to use three that are quilling to give you a better example in the demonstration process. If you can see, this one's very close to the edge. So what I'm doing is I'm lifting. If you lift, you get legs. If you scoop, you get spines. That's another tidbit that's not in the top 10, but lifting, you get legs. Scooping, you get spines. Again, I'm lifting it up because lifting you get, oh, look at him. 
she's not giving up the treat. But you can see he is much more relaxed. His squills are a lot are down. And he wants to take that treat with him. These are just a couple of examples of how you can spend time with your hedgehog out of the cage without actually touching it. You can do this, the same type of situation in a playpen. We have a tunnel, a place for your hedgehog to hide. Cups, you can include a wheel at playtime. Any, any type of toy, any type of activity that your hedgehog can do outside of the cage in your presence is always good. Our playpens are big enough that I get in right with the hedgehog in the playpen, depending on what playpen you have. A kiddie pool also works good, but you can see the hedgehogs are exploring. Our final bonding and handling tip is our skincare oil. Our skincare oil has rosemary and lavender in it, which are naturally relaxing. So it's a little aromatherapy for both you and your hedgehog. You can use it on your hands like this. I just put a small drop on my hands and rub it in. And I have found that my hands are less sensitive to the prickles of the hedgehogs and I find that the hedgehogs are a little bit more relaxed and easy to handle. Something else to think about if you're getting a hedgehog from us is a smell that your hedgehog is familiar with. So you will smell more familiar to your hedgehog um, because they're used to me and used to our skincare oil. So you can use our skincare oil both on your hands to help your hands feel a little bit more smooth and a little bit less prickly, but you can also use it to help your hedgehog relax and get off to a little bit better start in the bonding process. Thank you so much for sticking with us to the end of this video. I hope that you have found that I have a huge passion for education and I love talking to my customers and I love teaching people about hedgehogs. You didn't get to see a lot of cuteness in this video, but hopefully that you have enough information to help you make a better decision if you're just thinking about getting a hedgehog or if you're one of our customers, hopefully this has helped prepare you for your visit to our store. If you are one of our customers, make sure you tell us your very favorite thing in the video that you learned or write down a question and we'll give you a free gift. Watching this video is really important for us so that you're not overwhelmed with the information on the first day that you come. If you're not one of our customers that um, is coming to our store, um, thanks for watching anyway. Everyone, make sure you like and subscribe. Please comment if you have video, video suggestions that um, you would like us to make, or if you have a question, we'll try to send you a link to a video that we've already done, but we do like interacting with you. If you're having a problem with your hedgehog, if you're one of our customers, good news. I love to stay in touch with you. I would be happy to do a video consultation. You have my cell phone number, text me, we can FaceTime or um, set up a Zoom if we need to. If you're not one of our customers, if you're somewhere around the world, um, we actually did a, a video conference with someone in Italy not too long ago, and we've helped people with from Slovakia. So um, set up a video consultation. We'll include the link in the notes below. Um, so stay with us. Thanks for being with us on Hedgehog Connection.